XFL is in the Mid-South today, the final home game of this inaugural season. For Memphis, the fans here are still holding out hope that the X can knock off the hottest team in the league and keep their playoff hopes alive. Today, for the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee, it's the LA Extreme and the Memphis Maniacs. Well, just two weeks to go, and the West is indeed wild. All the teams still jostling for the playoffs. L.A. is already clinched. More on that scenario in just a moment. But first, you know how we started off. We'll go down to the field for the mad scramble. All right, gentlemen. The team that recovers the ball will have a choice of kicking, receiving, or defending a goal. Do not false start. I will say set. Then I'll blow my whistle. Are you ready? Yeah. Set. So Memphis, Kevin Dunn gets it for Memphis. He's now two and five, and Damon Dunn is now over five on the scramble so far this year for LA. Hi, everybody. Craig Benavini, Big Bob Golick. Welcome to the XFL on TNN. Two games to go. The hottest team in the XFL, the LA Extreme, playing today against Memphis. Their last loss came against the Axe way back in week four. Boy, it sure did. And uh, But the, from that time on, this Los Angeles team has been on a roll. Somebody was waiting for somebody to really pick it up and keep going, and that has been the Los Angeles team. They have got something to work for here, as you said before. Yeah. Home field advantage is is something they can't reach, so we'll watch them play very good ball today. They have an axe to grind indeed today very after nice. losing lastly to Memphis. Let's look at this scenario, Bob. L.A., as you said, already in the playoffs. There are some things still on the table for them. They can clinch the West with a win today or a San Francisco loss tonight at Vegas, the UPN game, and they can clinch home field throughout the playoffs. They need two wins for that and an Orlando loss next week when the Rage play. As for Memphis, Still alive, but much cloudier. They have to win their two remaining games. We're not done yet. They need two San Francisco losses. Are we done yet? No. Here's the biggie, Bob. They've got to overcome a 49-point differential oh. with the Las Vegas Outlaws. However, they will play the Outlaws next week. Mm -hmm. If they can get a nice win this week and then, let's say, beat the Vegas team by maybe 20 next, they still got a shot, although it's a slim hope. A shot. That's 49, uh, 49 uh, I'm point trying thing. to sell you on it, but you know. Yeah, I'm not buying that for a minute, but we'll see how they do today. But today is going to be interesting. If they do get the yardage and you do get the point, it's going to be up to Jim Druckenmiller because their running backs, they've got four of them, but guess what? Three are broken. So, well, partially broken. We'll probably we'll wait, probably see mostly a passing attack today from Druckenmiller. And uh, on the other side, I would imagine Tommy Maddox will match up with him, probably uh, pass well, for pass. Bob, certainly nobody's been hotter in the XFL than Tommy Maddox, who leads the XFL in virtually all of the key passing categories. Mm -hmm. And he's been red hot, particularly over the four-game win streak. Absolutely. He has found his receivers in Copeland and McDonald. If they start covering, covering those guys, double covering those guys, he has other receivers. But you see that he's mistake, virtually mistake-free with only one interception. And he has been so terrific all year. As you look at Jim Druckenmiller, he came on for uh, Marcus Crandall early in the year. He's got one of the yeah. best arms in the league, no doubt. You know, when he first came into the league, they thought he was kind of immature, but he's really come along. They said he spends a lot of time in meeting rooms now, extra time, watching film, learning to be a quarterback, and I think it's paying off on the field. No one's ever questioned the big arm from Jim Drucker. No. For more of the acts, let's go down to Sarah Kipps, Kip Lewis, and Coach Kippy Brown. Well, Coach Kippy Brown, you guys still have an outside shot to get into the playoffs, but you're running into a Los Angeles team that's on a roll. What's your biggest concern today? Well, we've got to take care of our business. We've got to play as well as we can play, not turn the ball over, and then make plays when we have opportunities. You have a depleted running back court coming into this game. Does that put too much pressure on your passing game? Well, no, we just have to do what we do. We're going to run the football and uh, hopefully be successful, but uh, turnovers and mistakes are usually a determinant factor in the ball game. All right, Coach, let's go to the other sidelines where Lee Rareman is standing by with Coach Al Luganbill. Coach Luganbill, you've clinched a playoff spot. Your team is relatively healthy. Why not just coast into the playoffs and almost mail it in today? That's not the way this league's made, and uh, <laughs> we have too much respect for Kippy and this football team to do that. We'll play hard. Well, and, and does the fact that Memphis spanked you pretty good in, on your home field week four, does that weigh heavily on the minds of your players? Kicked our butt physically. What about that 2,500? I know these guys were talking about it on the sidelines a minute ago. We'll, be, we'll play hard. Al Luganville said one time this year his team has been beaten physically at both sides of the line, and it was against the Axe, and Bob, he made that point quite clear mm -hmm. to his players as if they didn't know it 
already <laughs> this week. Yeah, Jose Cortez will kick it off for the I, extreme. I was going to say, a reminder once in a while does wonders, especially in a, in a good situation where you're trying to get yourself some home field advantage. Kevin Cobb at the goal line brings it up to the 20 and gets to the 23. He was taken down by uh, Ronnie Carpenter. And Memphis will start it off at the 23. Well, like we said before, they've got some injuries to the running back situation in uh, in Memphis. Rashawn Salon we'll was their starter. He we'll had go, a shoulder baby. injury. Yeah, yeah, uh, Brent we'll Moss stepped Set in. Tempo. He got right right Nick. Uh, Sam right 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 Bo Morgan is, is basically one of the only guys that, that is kind of injury free. So we're probably going to see a lot of Jim Druckenmiller. Set right over. Right over. over. Druck handing out Bo Morgan, a versatile back. Nothing doing there. Stop quickly. And the first battle on out. test of wills on the line was certainly going to L.A. But, of course, uh, four weeks ago, L.A. was taking on Rashawn Salam, one of the best running backs yeah, in Now they take on Bo Morgan, a guy with a lot of heart, but certainly not the same skill as Rashawn Salam. Exactly. He's a smaller guy. comes out of the Air Force Academy. Yeah, I played a little pro ball, but, uh, you know, 5'9", 200 pounds. Isn't a guy who's going to bust his, bust his butt for some extra yardage. Bo was on the Cowboys practice squad as a quarterback in the NFL. Druckenmiller, hey, he's still fighting. Look at him go! Druckenmiller near 40 to 50. And Jim Druckenmiller, who's 6'4", 240 pounds, has just scampered for a gain of 42 yards. He was looking downfield to Daryl Hobbs. Wow. But he was uh, held up by, the, by one of the coverage guys. He saw that then the <laughs> Druck and Miller saw the middle of the field wide open. And as you can tell, I, guess, I, I can't say it. As I say, as you can tell, he's not much of a runner, but he hey. just picked up a ton of yardage and <laughs> proved that he could do it. I couldn't tell by that run. <laughs> you have a very high standard, I guess, Bob. 42 yard pickup. Druck and Miller, he could tell, we know that. The ball dropped by Charles Jordan, who was really rammed by Del McGee and Jordan appears to be down after the hard hit. And he might be hurt. Uh, he's one of their receivers, one of the tough receivers they've got. Daryl Holmes, Charles Jordan. And uh, I, I, it sounds to me like he's kind of got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Get these soda pads off. Uh, Jordan's been the favorite receiver of Druckenmiller over the last few weeks. Why would he want the shoulder pad off, Bob? Well, 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 shoulder, shoulder injury there? No, no, I've got a feeling that from the what he sounded like, I've heard that sound many times in the field. Yeah. You get the wind knocked out of you, it's that very short, choppy breath where you just can't, the, the diaphragm starts to spasm and you can't take a deep breath. And there you saw the helmet right into the rib, so definitely got the wind knocked out of him and you know the, at that point you know, when you're fighting for your breath everything feels like it's constricting including the jersey and the shoulder bed mcgee was on the covers but it was juan long who made the hit and injured charles jordan that's nothing new for long knocked out jeff Fromm back in week seven separated shoulder the orlando quarterback Juan Long, once again, you start the game just sending a powerful message. It was the last time, House of Pain, I bring the pain. I'm back home, my field, my house. Do you have any roommates? Right, the receiver. What's it like living with this mean mother guy? <laughs> He's good to me. Well done. I think we got the picture. I think we got the picture. A lot of, a lot of injuries. This Memphis team has really been suffering the injuries. Uh, as you remember, we talked about Charles Jordan, Daryl Hobbs. But it was also uh, Kevin Prentice, the wide receiver, it was a big, big factor for them early. He goes down. We already told you about the three running backs, Salam, Cooper, and Moss. So they have uh, a lot of their primary people have been down and out. They've had to, to really focus everything around dropping Well, I think what you called it originally, Bob, is exactly what happened. Is Jordan is getting up now after being able to catch his breath. Yeah. And he looks to be okay after that vicious hit by Juan Long, yeah. who you, lives here in Memphis, Tennessee, went to Mississippi State. You learn to recognize the sounds that people make. You know, there's certain sounds they make when the wind's knocked out of them. There's certain, certain sounds they make when they, they're like whiny little punks and they're babies. And just, you know, Why are you, you looking at me? I'm not looking at you. You are. You're looking right at me. I was just talking to you. Oh, okay. Blue 80. Blue 80. Second and ten, Druck throwing a little short, but it's caught by Jaheen Arnold. We should pick up. No, they were saying it was off the grass. Oh, 
looked like he might have uh, Barnum was That's a shortstop. That would have been a beautiful play. But they got him, him. a little bit down the right. You know, what we're probably going to see, because of Bo Morgan being the running back, the only running back truly healthy, we're probably going to see a lot of the short go. passes. It's off and right done. Deep base right. L.A. special X read on one. Ready, Burton? Ready, hit me. I see yeah. Chitty Charles Jordan coming back in after getting the wind knocked out of him. Jordan has 37 catches. Fourth in the X-Reed, league. He's X-Reed. also... Second in yardage with 686. Mentally, he's going to have to get over Seven. that hit. Blue that 80. leaves a memory, believe me. Blue 80. Ricky Parker is man-to-man on Jordan. Drop looking Jordan's way, and he fires at the Roosevelt Potts for the gain up near the 31-yard line. Looked like he might have had Jordan deep had he wanted to go there. Yeah. Well, that's actually Bo Morgan on the catch. I'll tell you what, the, the pressure really affected his vision. He saw Pot short and decided to dump the ball off, but but he did. He had Jordan uh, deep. They ran a nice uh, nice X route. He wanted down the sidelines, had him wide open, but like I said, pressure right. affects your vision right. and makes you want to just dump it wherever you can get it off. Look at that, look at that. Just runs it. Kind of a, somewhat of a pick. Oh, the picks are illegal. So that wasn't truly a pick. Right around the linebacker, Rico Mack, and Al Lugano told me yesterday, not very happy with his linebacker play. As Morgan running, again, nothing doing. Long, long again makes the stop. I told you. One out of uh, Mississippi State. Now, you wouldn't think with a tough guy like this, uh, a poultry science major. That's what he got his degree. I don't know even know what, what is called. Now, somebody's got to kill the chickens. <laughs> not very happy with his... Linebacker play, as Morgan running, again, What's up, baby? Oh, What's up, baby? I told you. He got it in there, all right. Man can fly around and make some hits. No backs in the backfield for Los Angeles. L.A. taking over. Maddox pass is batted down and incomplete. A lot of good awareness by these uh, defenses I've noticed in the XFL. Every week, the bat- pass is being batted down. You know, they used to yell at us a lot of times. You know, if, you, if you can't get a pass rush, at least get your hands up. So if you batted a, batted a ball down, it usually meant that you weren't pass rushing very well. But these guys are very well, very much aware that even in the middle of a rush, they get that ball up and get the hands, the hands up and get it in the quarterback's face. 48 <laughs> Maddox throwing, has the man, Donnell McDonald. One of his favorite receivers, John Williams, with pretty good coverage. On Darnell. I'll tell you what, could have played him better than yeah. that. Ball was might have been thrown, but it was uh, the position they had on Williams that uh, allowed him to make the catch. Here we go. Let's go. Eight trips. Eight trips. 59 solid forward. I want right? Done. What Al Done. Lugan Done. likes most about Tommy Maddox, told me last night talking, he's giving up some of his individualism, not worried about the stats and putting the big numbers together. Throws it away at the proper time. Been on target when you need to do it. A fiery leader. Fires there. Right on target. Intercepted. Taken by Corey Sawyer. And he brings it down inside the 20. Interception the second in consecutive weeks after a nice streak of 107 passes that Maddox had going until last week. And let's, let's give that to Corey Sawyer, but let's also give that to Marvin Thomas. Defensive end who had a beautiful rush. Coming in from the one side, and, and, and uh, Tommy Maddox definitely saw the rush. You'll see from his left, Marvin Thomas coming in. Maddox feels the pressure, dumps the ball off quicker than he wants to, and does not read Sawyer stepping in front. High snap, might have thrown off a little of the timing too there, but Maddox laid it out, a big chance for the Axe. Two, eight, Rock play action, Morgan. Throwing receiver open over the head of Daryl Hobbs. Ricky Parker was on top of him. He had Hobbs inside. You know, Drunken Miller, Bob, very yeah. sharp in the Bob, first meeting Bob. against the extreme. It was all over in happened. wet conditions. But of late, he has been off a little bit, throwing short and overthrowing receivers. Well, that, and that's one of the things. He's been throwing it a little bit oh, high. No, right At six foot five, maybe you should squat down a little bit. He <laughs> forgot he's too tall for this. He went left, maybe. Big, strong guy. Just a little bit. Let me see. NFL experience. San Francisco and the Dolphins. He was the first round pick of the 49ers back in 97. Another play action. Druckenmiller firing. He's got Jordan. Del McGee was supposed to be covering. Regular. 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 Charles Jordan responding. It was in hard. Lost his breath. 
On the yep. first series, he came back here. This there, is the way to answer. Here you see him. Uh, Del McGee trying to catch it with a man-to-man -man, all the way from the other side of the field. Gets good position. That is, Jordan gets good position on the McGee. Wide open across the field. I ride zippers. I ride by spot. I ride zippers. I ride by spot. That's how you do that. 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 That's to get the extra point. So Memphis is on top early. You know, one of the things, Craig, that in the National Football League, when you when you look at the, the, uh, the conversion, the two-point conversion, where they have to run it in, most teams only have like two plays, only like two plays that they work on. Here in the XFL, because there is no kicking, you know, the, the Memphis team, for example, they have five different plays that they work in. You know, they're trying to add in more variations because basically you're talking about defenses in the XFL that actually have to game plan for this specific play. It happens every single week. It's going to happen. You're going to face it. Here's, let's check it again, the touchdown. You see McGee uh, in LA on the LA side. McGee comes out and crosses right in front of him. McGee gives him a little bit too much room. Bad angle of pursuit, wide open, Charles Jordan. Good thing with Jordan, too. After that hit he took early, you know, you, you worry about mentally, you know, is he going to be into it? You know, is he going to be worried about taking the hit? We used to call it, uh, if a guy was didn't like being hit or if he was afraid of being hit, we used to call it, he could say he could hit, he could hear a cat sipping milk at 100 yards. You know, they start to hear every little thing and they panic, but you can see McG or Jordan right back into the fray. He only heard the crowd roaring with that 22-yard touchdown catch. It's his third team of the year. Hobbs is in motion. Picked up by Parker. Rock rolling to the right side. In traffic throws. He was too high. He had Arnold. He had Jaheen Arnold open. He threw it over his head. And the Axe again cannot convert on the extra point. But they too take the early jump here at the Liberty Bowl. Chicago enforcers and the New York Hitmen. Archie rotates down and fades to the jump. Eska and you shall receive. There's the pump back. And wide open tight on a wide open tight end. Willie Kent in Chicago holds. They're still alive. The Guppy pass. They're still alive. A huge road victory for the enforcers. Gentlemen, Birmingham's playoff hopes are still alive. Real simple for them. They got to win tonight. There's a backward pass. Oh, look out. Double pass. Oh. Great effort by Birmingham, but I guess it was a better one by Orlando. So Derek Clark's late score giving Orlando the win moments ago. Charles Jordan after the touchdown catch heading off to get something checked out. They were, uh, Craig, they were checking up along his ribs. And then one of the things, too, I noticed checking his sternum because that uh, one long helmet caught him right about dead center in the chest. And, and we've seen a couple of guys over the last season's NFL football, a couple of sternum shots with cracked sternum. So it's a difficult injury to come back from. Not the thickest part of the shoulder pads no. either, is it? No, it's just where the laces are. And right. boy, you can take a pop there. Rochelle squeaking down the sideline. Somehow found some room. They'll get out near the 35-yard line. Tremont Lawless made the stop to push him out. And L.A. will start with good field position after the early miscue by Maddox, something he has not done in recent weeks. Well, we told you before the game, 11 touchdowns, only one interception. Uh, really have been Texas making the sales, right choices. Change, As I said right. before, though, it was pressure that and a, and a high snap, I think, that really made him hurry that throw before he saw Sawyer coming into position. 48! 48! Touch! Maddox firing over the head of uh, McDonald is incomplete. John Williams was defending. Guy sitting in there. There's a guy sitting right there. Haley, 49. Here we go. Let's go. Pipe twin Haley, 49. I want right. Pipe twin Haley, 49. We're gonna run it. Go. Sweep to the left. Trap, trap. Cover two men. 48. Hand off, Thompson. Hand off to Saladin McCullough. First carry of the game. 
Following his blockers for a gain of five yards. Well, you know, if, if all else fails, the one guy that we have uh, failed to mention in the discussion of the quarterback has been McCullough. Saladin McCullough has been a guy that Saladin McCullough has really come onto the scene for these guys. A couple of weeks ago, starting to really pound his way into the uh, line of scrimmage. Proven that not only can he, he has the speed to, to find the hole and find an opening, but he also got some some toughness. Three man just two touchdowns 48. running in the first five weeks. Since then, McCullough has taken over and he has four TDs over the last three games. Maddox looking for some room. No receivers open. He's firing in there to McDonald. Wow. Great effort by going on McDonald to dive and not only grab it, Bob, but dive ahead for the, I believe, the first down. See where they spot it. Well, I tell you what, Rico Clark made a play on that ball, and I thought he might have had it, but McDonald, great concentration, incredible concentration to hold on to that. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 92 defense. Penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. And that's a Reeves hit with the penalty after the throw. You see him there, 92, right in the middle. He comes out, he's chasing him. We didn't see it, which pretty much means that it was a late hit. You can check it out here. You'll see him come out late from the outside. Yeah. Speaking as a uh, an old nose tackle myself, if you have to run that far, we yeah. usually work only in the middle, and as uh, Howie Long used to call it, the phone booth. If you have to run that far, you got to hit something. <laughs> well, yeah, even if it costs you 15? Yeah, well, you know, you yell that later. McCullough gets inside the uh, 35 down to the 34. He's already the sixth leading rusher in the XFL. Empty, empty Pennsylvania. Here we go. Now we got states Until involved. empty, empty. 50 Pennsylvania on one, right? You heard him say empty. No backs in the backfield. Five wide receivers. Go! Jim Barker, the offensive coordinator for L.A., the voice you're hearing. The quarterback, Tommy Maddox. Maddox over the middle. Wide open. As Damon Gibson inside of the 25. Gibson, of course, the big spark a couple of weeks back in our mm -hmm. game on TNN against Orlando, mostly on special teams. Good job. Oh, bringing back the running back the punch beautifully. That time, though, they put five wide receivers out wide and dump it over the middle. Got to, you know, you spread out your coverage people all over the field. Hopefully, get it a guy like Gibson and give him a little, little, Charlie, little room right? to run. But the coverage was was good and tight, so he had no yards after the catch. Or yak. No. Got to have the yak. 48. There's some 48. of the leaders in yards after catch in this game, both teams. McCullough has room on the left side. Past the 20, taken down by Jackie Kellogg. Two minutes! Gain of six on the play. Good cutback, Kellogg uh, flowing over there to make the play, but if you are defense, you, you hear what they're saying. It's too many, it is too many. It's a trip. Rocket Florida special two on one, right? Tommy Maddox, Go. only one interception in his last 48. 134 attempts. 48. Still that Nine. pick earlier against Sawyer. Fires, complete to Copeland, who slipped at the 15. That's a bad mark, right right near the first down. Yeah. Jermaine, out of uh, the Tennessee area, went to Tennessee, starred for the Vols national championship team, thought he would wind up playing for the Axe, Memphis wound up it. Let's go, Texas Looking at two other players, including Marcus Nash, and they actually allocated locally, not knowing that Marcus would go to the NFL, and they lost their shot at Copeland and wound up in L.A. 48! Oh, we're watching an L.A. team, and this is what they do to you, Craig. We've seen them before. They just pound it away, pick up a little of the time, whether it's a run to the pass. Which game by McCullough, one of the things that favors of Copeland is his dance in the end zone, a dance that Quarterback Rico Clark does right. not want to see today. Can't stand it. And if they try to do it here, I might have to go in there and break it up. Uh, I can't see him doing that little dance out here on my field like that. Uh, it's not happening. So get ready. Get ready to rumble. There's Rico Clark. Does not want to see the dance from uh, Jermaine Copeland. And Maddox and Travis trying to buy time. Oh. There's time. Poor pass by Maddox, and Tyrone Bell is still going. He throws it to Rico Clark. Clark might do some dancing after this play. He's still going. Juking and jiving to the 43, and the Axe D comes up big again. Ty 
Tyrone Bell makes the catch. Rico Clark makes the run. Once again, it's pressure on Maddox to force him to make the bad throw. He just squeaks it off. And I don't know how you can't see Tyrone Bell, 6'3", 210, hanging out in front of your receiver. A well, nice dish, too, by Bell to Clark. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing an L.A. Extreme team that we have not seen since the beginning of the season. Sloppy, forcing the play, and giving the X a life here with slim playoff hopes. Our score here in Memphis is the X-60 Extreme Zip as we pause for a timeout. Let's take this look at New York linebacker Ron Murkerson, a great example of the U.S. Army's victories in life. Uh, 1998. Um I was diagnosed with anterior compartment syndrome uh, in both of my lower legs. Uh, they had to perform a, a procedure to release the pressure from from uh, my muscle compartments in my lower legs. This was something that was rare in football players. I didn't have a lot of answers and didn't know if it was going to turn out the way that everyone hoped it would. It makes me appreciate the fact that, you know, no matter what happens, um, that I'll be able to keep pushing through and everything will work out. Everybody's gonna know me before I leave here today. Everybody's gonna know me. Tyrone Bell is from Mississippi. That's all crazy, baby. From Mississippi as well with the North Alabama. Sixth round pick of the San Diego Chargers a couple of years ago. The both teams and all the teams around the XFL littered with players with NFL experience, including Jim Druckenmiller fires to Daryl Hobbs, a six-year NFL veteran, and he makes the catch out of Los Angeles, California. Hobbs a gain of seven on the play. I just saw Hobbs on the field uh, before the game. He's uh, kind of a resident of my old team, the Raiders, so yep. he's kind of hung out a little bit there. He's still playing, and I'm sitting up here with you. <laughs> Which I'm enjoying immensely. How things change. <laughs> Mike 50. Uh, he laughed Mike 59. When he said it, folks. Send blue 80. Second and four. Blue 80. Hunt. 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 Foul, foul, foul. Hand off to Sanford. His first hand off of the game. Gaining a few yards. He's close to the first down. A Darnell McDonald. Both receivers taking shots here. Jordan from Memphis. McDonald limped off, and they're looking at his ankle. Believes on the to be on the right side of his foot. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a cramp. Let me see if I can get it in here. Hold on. He's hoping it's a cramp. Darnell, a big factor. He's had touchdowns in seven of the eight games he's played in. And his eight touchdown catches leads the XFL Mike this 59, year. Mike 59! He's having a hard time getting any kind of pressure at all on that foot, so it's going to be, uh, unless it tightens up on him a little bit, he's going to have a hard time drop. any kind of pressure. Fires complete! That's the danger of the Axe offense. Darrell Hobbs inside of Ricky Parker. And, you know, when you got an experienced quarterback and good wideouts, even with the loss of the talented Kevin Prentice, it's a tough offense to defend. That's right, and these guys, like I said, they, they are starting to match up pretty well together. We talked about Druckenmiller having a little bit of problem as far as throwing the ball a little high. Well, it seems like he's getting into place. In fact, there have been a couple of low ones, and getting right down. Ricky Parker in coverage. Ball nicely thrown to the outside of coverage. Good catch by Hobbs. Set blue 80. Blue 80. Druckenmiller pitching to Sanford. Patrick Sanford. Oh, what a goal! Yeah. At the 10! Yeah. Touchdown! Maniacs, Patrick Sanford! Wow. Hey, hey, hey. Greg, hey. Nine on face down. No Rashawn Salam, no Brent Moss. And right now it's a case of who cares for the axe because Patrick Sanford has rippled into the end zone 30 yards of the act. Having a 12 nothing lead and what a hole. Bob Golick, you could have run. Yeah, well, well they, maybe not, but they, they came, well, maybe not, yeah. <laughs> they came with a strong <laughs> run blitz, and backside guy just over-pursued. Sanford cut it back, and it was wide open. Rock throwing, comes to the car, made it look easy. Daryl Hobbs, hey, which team is the hottest I don't in know. the XFL? <laughs> Parker just turned absolutely the wrong way on that one. Now he's going to to work for us. Here, you'll see the right here on the touchdown. Right he cuts it back. The defense had over-pursued. Everybody had gotten upfield. Stafford with nowhere to go except the end zone. So the Memphis Maniacs, all of a sudden, their playoff hopes looking 
A lot better now. They're up 13 zip. We're back in Memphis. 13 zip acts. No one around the league has ever questioned the talent in the teal. Hey, I've had trouble. Now, some have questioned the mindset of this <laughs> fellow right there. But not the talent of the teal. Jeff Hall. Short kick picked up by Rochelle at his own 15. Out of final hole gets up to the 30 yard line, Bob. Hey, great right, talent on the X, but uh, today they're to executed. Let's take a look at this. You're going to see a run blitz. The two bottom defenders, you're going to see them on the line of scrimmage. Run blitz. They're going to over pursue up into the line of scrimmage too far where they can't get free to make the play. You see you see him run back. There's nobody back on the backside to come back and make that play. Beautiful blo blocking downfield. We've talked about that before. Uh, there were wide receivers in the XFL I'm very impressed with, and especially today in Memphis, blocking very well downfield for their, their running backs. So Maddox, eight passes, two picked off today. After just one and 134 over the middle, complete Copeland has some room. He gets away from a tackler and gets the first down before DJ Cooper, the nose guard, finally brought him down. You know, for Maddox now, I mean, he can't, he cannot panic about this. You know, only one, one interception coming in. You know, he's got two more today. He cannot panic now. Cannot worry about it. He's got it. What they've got to do is they've got to give him protection because it's, it's him being hassled. It's him having to throw. With his feet not set, that's giving him the, the blurred vision, the, you know, the bad vision of the defenders. There's McCullough, who has really sparked the LA offense, uh, adding a running weapon they had yeah. not had early in the year, a game of five. And right now, with thir only down 13 points, there's no reason just to go attack the running, uh, the passing game. Use McCullough. He's a guy that gives you a great balance here. Off way back inside, Eric. The ball was already back inside. No, when he tossed it. Al Luganville as the first quarter winds down. I know, but walking with the defense, which has been a problem, along with miscues from the normally reliable Tommy Maddox. Boy Sawyer, one pick to set up a touchdown for the Axe, and the other one was picked off by Tyrone Bell. Both, like I said, both times Tommy Maddox hassled. Bad choice as a receiver. That's just what they did. One reason the LA Extreme are six and two, second in the league in the turnover ratio at plus eight. Today though, minus two at the two picks. Memphis, big reason they're three and five, Bob, minus nine. In fact, they only had nine takeaways all year. Today, two big picks leading to 13 points, and that's been the difference in the game. You know, a lot of people don't just look at the giveaway takeaway ratio, but it is one of the biggest, one of the biggest numbers that you look at in success of a team. They only had four interceptions. That was oh, poorly geez. thrown again. They only had four interceptions all year, and they've already got two here today against the best passer in the XFL. Well, I'll tell you what, they only had a third one there. <laughs> that ball was just floated right in, and uh, had the defender not lost their footing, that would have been another interception. Quick drop by Maddox. They were just off target. Tommy's out of Shreveport, Louisiana. His parents are here. Went to dinner with them last night. We're at the game here at the Liberty Bowl today. Play action. Oh, good ball there to Copeland. And Jermaine Copeland has it inside Axe territory at the 43. Boy, that was a nice run. And again, we talked about chemistry between receivers and quarterbacks. He was sitting in. Copeland, that is, was sitting in between here we go. about three defenders as they all kind of closed in on him. That ball was well, nicely down, thrown down, in. Down, good Texas, good energy behind down, right? it. 49. Jermaine telling us he has 15 family members here at the game. Very well known to fans around here. Go. Star for the Volunteers National Championship team, McCullough. On the handoff, gets inside the 40. Tough break here going into the playoffs. What's the injury and when will we be back? Um, I don't know. I think I tore my calf muscle and I am being, I'm not coming back today. What about uh, going next week or into the playoffs? I don't know. I don't know. Well, that is a tough one. Wow. I, have, I have torn my calf muscle a couple of times, and uh, I'm telling you what, there's a, one of the first things I have to do is stop the bleeding. 49. There's a lot of internal muscular bleeding, and uh, the leg would probably swell up about twice its normal size. Really? McCullough driving forward inside the 35, down to the 32. Well, it's, it's, it's a long process. 
for, for that. And for McDonald to come back, it's going to be tough. They, they, they can't stop the bleeding. It'll have to stop itself. Depending on the severity of the tear, they'll have to then get the swelling down. It just takes a long time. You know, for a grunt down in the, in the line of scrimmage, down in the trenches, yeah, you know, you can go tough it out. But for a wide receiver, he's got to go make the cut. It's going to be tough. Big loss for L.A. is, again, McDonald leads the league in touchdown catches with eight. 32 catches on the year. And they've been relatively healthy all year long. Compared to a lot of teams. In motion, a little fake, Copeland. Not blocked, though, but he still made the catch. And then he, well, they're going to give him the reception. He was hit hard by Jackie Kellogg, who does not like the call. But Copeland somehow hung in there and appeared to maybe drop it as he hit the ground. I think that might have been a good call, Bob. I think it was a good call. Copeland came out and, uh, and he, he, he caught him in motion. They tried to do a pump fake. Did not fool them at all, but uh, right <laughs> the ball was right on target. And again, the ball didn't pop out until he hit the ground, so that was a good reception. So his foot did not hit the ground. Well, if the, if the, if the, if the defenders knock him out of bounds, then, it's, right, then speed in bounds is a moot point. Hey, you know. Taken by Shante Carver there. Good play after the gain of three. Stream trying to answer here. Down with the ball. Well, you know, we watched the last time the Extreme had the ball. They drove down the field just like this. They, they hold us. You know, they hold us. You know, they can't block us, so they hold us. They don't come down the ball and you give. It's too damn important. You got to get right. Everybody he didn't come down with the ball, though. He was arguing the catch by Copeland. Remains going to go in motion here. Fake, and they're going to hand off to McCullough. Kellogg got a piece of him in the backfield. Jackie Kellogg. It's going to mean a lot. Uh, I've got about 19 of my family members coming down, and uh, there's going to be a lot of friends coming. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting back, stepping on my soil, where I was born and raised, that sweet country place, big state, Tennessee. I'm happy to get back. Uh, something I look forward to. I can't wait to get there. Renee Copeland would love to do a dance here. Big third and 13, Maddox on the roll. He's got a man in Gibson. Gibson inside the 15. Oh. Oh. Not enough for the first down. They're going to have to bring on the incredibly reliable Jose Cortez, the hottest kicker in the XFL, and try and get three out of it. Uh, that's, uh, you know, like I said, we dro they drove down this time. Last time they made this kind of drive, the interception shut them down. They're going to be happy to get any points right now as they uh, settle for the three. Three more field goals last week. He made seven straight, 17 out of 21, and he's hit 16 of his last 17 with the shoe on Jose Cortez from 31. Good up. It's good again. Number eight straight for Jose Cortez. And our score in Memphis, the Axe leading 13 to three. Back after these messages and a word from your local station. There he is. <laughs> and there they are. Shin Yamada yeah. from Osaka, Japan. He won the uh, top amateur league over there. A gentleman by the name of Tom Prada knows Kippy Brown. Called Kippy about him. He's considered the best player in Japan. He flew to Vegas January 10th after this Japanese season. Made the team. He hits hard. Good special teams guy. Backup linebacker. He was also the first Japanese player to ever play in a... NFL game. NFL for his fans. Kick goes out of bounds. And that'll bring up the flag. Here's Cortez's kick. And nice grab. Hey, nice snag, kid. <laughs> Where's he going? He's gone. <laughs> he's at the he's at row B. He goes to row D. Good move around. Nice. Like David Gibson making the moves out there. The family brings the ball out to the 40. What kick there by Cortez. Very short, it only went 45 yards and out of bounds. Not much of a 45. wind factor here, a little bit. Nice 55 degree day in Memphis, Tennessee, the Mid South. The Axe keeping slim playoff hopes on. Dunk's going to take off again. One long trying to catch up to him and drops a tough dude. Is he? Wow. 
inside the 45. He runs pretty well for a 240 pounder. <laughs> you know, I didn't think he did, and I, I, my apologies to you, Druck. You're moving well, and I'm telling you what, not only is he moving, he's not sliding. Juan he's, Long couldn't catch it. What's 46? Except Juan Long tried to make the play. He kicked out of it. And instead of sliding for safety, 17-yard gain, he goes down the All right, here. They get the extra yard. Six foot four. No, no, no. Like six five though. Isn't he like two forty? He's, He's not your typical so quarterback. In fact, I left zip. Stung is back in college at Virginia Tech. Eight, they had a strength competition, hold on, hold on, hold on. and he did among other things. Time out. Time out. Put a harness around him and dragged a Volkswagen, <laughs> and he had his agent send that to the NFL and say, "Hey, can you uh, your it? typical little quarterback back there?" Truck right now leading the axe to a 13-3 lead. 800 call ATT for collect calls. You're on. Here's your chance. The Axe fans, their final home game of the regular season has been a disappointing overall season because of the record. Four weeks ago, they were just like LA after beating the extreme at two and two. Since then, have lost three or four. Injured running back Salam out now, but Truck looking good today. He throws a little short there. He did have his receiver, Charles oh, Jordan. And it's incomplete. Well, big game tonight coming up on UPN at 7 o'clock. More XFL action. And it is a huge one in Vegas tonight. San Francisco at Las Vegas. The winner moves into the playoff spot, and the loser is out. However, there is a contingency if the San Francisco Demons should lose both their games. Then, of course, Memphis still has the outside shot. But the other point is, most importantly, the loser's out. Right. And the winner will take control with that one game to go and have a good shot at the spot. Flag is down on the run. Stanford and Memphis has moved down that point differential down to 39. We're going to hold on 69 blue right here at the spot, Captain. Well, it looks like Isaac Davis is being hit with a uh, holding call. You wanted third and ten or second and twenty. Right behind the scrimmage, Joe. Uh, third and ten or second and twenty. Answer to get third and ten. Do they want to lose the uh, the the down or do they want a second and twenty? You give them a down back, but you you put them back out of field position. Yeah, right. so again, the loser of tonight's game out. Memphis needing a win to stay alive, and they also need San Francisco to lose that game. Tonight, if the Demons win, they will have wrapped up the playoff position. So remember, it's, 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 they have to, Memphis has to win the next two tonight right. and next week. San Francisco has to lose tonight and next week. And then they have to make up that 49 point, point differential, which is now down to 39 points. Down to 39. They need the Vegas win too, so... They're hoping for a Vegas, if you can have the best case scenario, a one-point win yeah. for, for the Outlaws. Curtis Eason is down for L.A. We will step aside and come back with more of that for the second quarter. Memphis by 10. Don't. Curtis Eason being attended to on the bench of the L.A. Extreme. have already had a tough loss to so lead to be calf muscle. Torn by receiver Blue Donald 40. McDonald out for this game and who knows 40. the rest of the way. Now Eason out, talking to the fires. Wide open is Jordan. And the extreme having trouble handling the very speedy and capable receiver Charles Jordan. Stucky made the stop. We, we told you it would be a big day for Brock and he proved it. So far he leads the uh, rushing today. Two carries, 53 yards. And for the most part, he's been right on target with his receivers. You see here the aggressiveness, not going for the slide, putting the head down to pick up the extra yardage. He definitely wants to get this win. Jim, not one of those kids who always played quarterback. In fact, he told me his mom did not want him playing football. He played soccer until about the age or ninth grade, and his dad thought said, hey, how about football? Rose complete to Bo Morgan, but he started in football as a linebacker running back. His uncle, Dennis Oncotz, is an All-American yeah, linebacker Penn State. And he has that kind of mentality. You think of him more of a, yeah. of a rugged type guy. And finally, hey. at a camp at Penn State, That's he was job, Penn State football camps. Jim hey. Caldwell, the quarterback job. coach of the Lions, saw him throwing. Mm -hmm. And year after year, he got better and better. 
and that turned to quarterback. Well, you know what? The, the way quarterbacks are taking the beatings in all the pro leagues now is getting to the point where you better start breeding some big, big quarterbacks that can take care of themselves. Especially in the XFL, Jeff Hall with a booming punt. It is a beauty to Godson down at the uh, five is Gibson. Gibson trying to find some room. He turns the corner and gets up to the almost the 15-yard line before he was... 34-yard punt, seven yards return, and that was all Gibson on that return. He was cornered down there. Boy, did he find a way of at least getting himself out of the shadow of that goal line. XFL and NBC, the Extreme and the Demons at the L.A. Coliseum. Again, this game has been moved from your initial schedule to Saturday, so fans out in California, make your plans to head down for that big battle next week. The Extreme, the Demons, first place could be on the line in that game. At the L.A. Coliseum, it's Saturday at 8 o'clock. Join us, of course, on NBC for the action. And in person, if you can make it out to the Coliseum. For No Cal versus Southern Cal, the Extreme and the Demons. Next week in the regular season finale. For two teams that both hope to be a big part of the playoff picture. Maddox Bannon's in the air! And Marvin Thomas, the left end, did not see it. Because it was there for the taking. How he picked it up? Nobody saw that ball because that thing was floating up there for a long time. And that could have been a touchdown for, for Memphis had they seen that ball take off. Watch him as he get his hands up. Boom. Spat that baby up. Oh, got the shot in on Maddox, too. <laughs> he picked that could have been called, Bob. Uh, it could have been killed. I mean, yeah, that was a little bit extra. I don't know why they didn't call that, but uh, he's a defensive lineman. I got to side with him. 48! <laughs> Maddox man over the middle is McCullough wide open covering well on the play by Paris Lennon who missed half the season the torn hack he's back in and has played well according to Kippy Brown well they've got it down to a 10 point differential here and the one thing that LA has been able to do all day has been able to move the ball they've got five, go, just, go, just go, under go, six go. minutes to Whoa, move this ball one, down right. the length of the field and hopefully strike and uh, get themselves a little bit closer. They've been able to do it. If they can keep the pressure off of Maddox, keep Maddox from making those mistakes. Third and four. LA second and third down conversions, almost 42% this year. One of the proud stats for Luka, the flag down. If the gets it, he has the yardage, but there is a flag down. He's going for the 50, and down to the 42 of Memphis. Dragged down by Rico Clark, but again, the flag down, and it could be so, coming back. It will be holding against LA. Saladin McCullough is going to hate life right about now. But not any more than the, the big offensive linemen that were holding who didn't actually even move from the line of scrimmage. Everybody else ran downfield okay. chasing the play. The guys that were holding right. on the play just both. stood there going, oh, geez, are yeah, coming back. Yeah, you don't call me that. All right, all right. Hey, hey. Don't talk to me that way. You're in your spot, yeah. And then half the distance. Is it just Both me, Bob, or is there only one ref in the XFL, and it's this guy right here? <laughs> you might be right. Holding. Does he do every game? 65 offense. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number eight off defense. The 15-yard penalty will be accepted. The holding will be declined. David Third Kutay, down. Referee. Left guard, number 64, Chris Breimer. Oh, oh, man. A little bit of a hold <laughs> and a throw. And at the end, uh, the end of the play, when it was all said and done, you can hear one of the one of the umpires yelling about, "Hey, you know, don't, don't talk to me that way." So, obviously, uh, Maddox not happy with the call, or not happy with the way things are being called out there, gets himself hit with an unsportsmanlike. I'm not happy with the score either. At 13-3, this is a huge game for LA. Oh, so I was right. At six and two, trying to clinch first place, guarantee the home game. They're already in the playoffs. However, they're still holding out some hope that they can grab the overall home field if they can win two and see Orlando lose next week in their finale at Chicago. How about the enforcers of the big win last night making their playoff hope even brighter as McCullough has stopped in the backfield on third and long. And L.A. is going to have to punt. Well, that was a huge penalty. Getting them back, putting them back to two penalties, the holding, negating that run, and what then happened? the enforcement like... They're going to be punting out of their own end zone. And it should be very good, although L.A.'s got a pretty good punter. They should be pretty good field position for Memphis. They may 
be able to get into the score before halftime. And he and Arnold is the lone man back. They're going to try and block this as well. Noel Prefontaine, the best punter in the league, and a bit of a controversial story for some of the XFL coaches because he's actually looking as the third cornerback for the team. Good punch, you see it there, with the left foot. But with only one man to get on Arnold, he's got some room inside the 45. Bubble the ball! Bubble the ball! L.A. may have come up with it. Yes, the extreme have recovered it as Jaheen Arnold fumbled the ball. Damon Gibson recovered the ball. Now some pushing and shoving going on. Big break for L.A. with 4.17 to go. Another injured player down after this play. What happened here, Bob? They just cut it back, but you're going to see the tackle. The, the helmet hits right on the ball. Ball pops loose. Uh, you know, it's the one thing to hold on to it. You're going to see the head, but the defender's head on. coming in. Oh, no, hit. I think it's Aaron Johnson. Inside the 45. Oh, ball. 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 I believe it was number 27, Eric Johnson, getting in, putting his helmet right on the ball, knocking it loose. Although Eric is down. If you saw him when they hit, he did have his head down, so he kind of had his, his neck compressed down, chin going towards the chest. They tell you when you're going to hit. You've got to hit with your head up. You've got to hit with your face up. The only time you can possibly hurt your neck is when you get your head down. So they're checking him out now. Hopefully he's, uh, he'll be okay. That's right from the first time you put the pads on. That the first time. Basic axiom of football. Huh? Yeah, you get the, you, you hit somebody, you put the face on, whatever. You put the face between the numbers, you make the play. You do not put your head down. Four seventeen remaining here in the half at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Eric Johnson got up and walked off after this tackle. You see Eric Johnson, 27. Do not put your head down. Do not put your head down. And then don't let your teammate kick in the back of the head either. Uh, but you see right there, he does force the fumble. But uh, boy, that, uh, that's going to take a toll on you. As you see, he gets his head down, gets it hit, twisted to the side. Luckily, his head was to the side of the, of yeah, the, the ball dead on. It wasn't yeah, dead on. It could have been much more serious. So Eric Johnson out of Idaho State appears to be okay for LA. 48, 48, big break 10. for the extreme. They'll try to cash in instead of facing terrible field position. Oh, oh. Right off the hands of Copeland. Incomplete. Anthony Marshall on the coverage. Could have been the axe at the 43 going in for three or six or seven more instead. The fumble and the extreme takeover. Eric Johnson, Bob Golick says that's one way not to tackle unless you want to hurt yourself. But you look like you're feeling better now. I am. I'm good. I'm good. You know, it's just one of those things that happens to everybody every now and then. So, hey, I'm back. I'll be back. But you got to be proud of yourself. You caused a fumble. Hey, that's, hey, I'm out there to complete. I mean, do something. You know what I'm saying? Get something back from my team. I'm, hey, I'll be back. McCullough wraps up. Good play by Shante Carver. One of the best ends in the XFL shock on the intensive right end out of Stockton, California. Hey, uh, what's up with Lee throwing me under the bus? <laughs> hey, that's what Bob Golick said. Don't tackle that way. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Rearman. He's nice, right, man. Tell anybody else. <laughs> yeah, you got to call it out when you come out here. Well, you've seen his act. I've seen it. I've caught his act many times. No, no, no. Rarely in his red pants, though. Yeah, we got to get a shot of Lee. On the sideline there today. 48! He's selling popcorn. Nice throw. Oh, middle Rochelle has got it past the 50 yard line. Down to the 48. Tyrone Bell and man to man coverage just chasing Rochelle and right there with him. But again, good throw, good catch. Tell you what, you know, we're seeing the one when, when Maddox is hot. When Maddox is hot and he gets the ball in there. Man, he can he can really throw that ball where it needs to be. Right across the middle, you see in the middle of your screen. So that'll bring up fourth down. About two. We'll be back, baby. Somebody needs to trim. We'll be back. Don't worry. Right. Let's see. Three Fontaine on the field. All right, baby. Lock winding down toward the two-minute warning. And a timeout called by Los Angeles with 2.16 remaining. <laughs>
I'll tell you what, though. We're only 10 points down. Can we get the ball first? Yeah, we get the ball first. Let's punt it. Punt it! Very solid thinking by the 55-year-old head coach. Good guy, Al Lukenville, in his 16th season as a head coach, and I think this is a pretty obvious decision here. You're in midfield, you don't want to give the Axe great field position. If they're going to score, make them work their way down the field. Especially when their offense has been playing and producing the way that it has today. And they have the great punter in Prefontaine, the left footer. Look at this, a big play! And it goes out and out of bounds, and that is costly. And you know, if it was a fake, Tinker Keck certainly didn't have any idea because he wasn't looking for the Take ball. Off out of bounds. Unless it was a shank. On 14 in the kicking team. Ball is placed 10 yards in advance of where the ball crossed the sideline. First down. I think he was trying to, he was trying to like lob it into the corner where it could have been a free ball. But he yeah, just got to be on the same page with your mates right. if that's the case. I think he just did not catch as much of the ball as he had wanted to. See what happened. Lee's down there. Noel, that didn't go with the, quite the way you guys planned. What was the strategy there? Uh, we had a strategy. We were just trying to get in the corner and uh, hopefully recover the fumble. But uh, our hawk down here didn't didn't see it, and, and that wasn't the greatest kick in the world. Uh, well, it backfired because of XFL rules. It goes out of bounds. It comes up 10 yards from the spot there, and it didn't appear that Keck picked the ball up at all. No, so, he, he he really shanked it a little bit. And the, the real, again, the, the penalty comes from, from the fact, Craig, that, you know, the, the, with the 25 yards, the right, ball go. to go 25 so yards, you don't right. want guys, yeah, they don't necessarily so want people to be shooting for that all the time. And we've got to give them a little bit something, a little bit of a penalty if they try to do that. Mike's 51, Mike's 51. It's the key, too, Mike. Bob. They, they go, they cough and corner, punting it all. They have to keep the ball in play. So the net gain was a lousy, oh, about 13 yards. Jordan is crunched again. Well, they were at the 49 in mm -hmm. Memphis. They only gained 13 with the penalty. Not what Al Luganville had in mind when he said, we're up by 10, oh. let's punt it. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it looked like they wanted to just kind of bounce it into the corner and let somebody try and pick it up. Maybe Bam. bring up the fumble. Got a little fancy there. I mean, you got the best punt in the league. Why not just boom that one and then knock him down deep? That seemed to be the thought. Well, let's see. 155. Maybe X have just one time to go. Plenty of time on the clock. Rock is going to run. That was a set play. And he got it only a couple of yards. Not quite oh. sure what they had in mind there. Got a player down. Got a player down. His wrist. Bernard Williams is down. Seen a lot of. Yeah. Injured players so far in this game. Actually, the only injury of note really so far is the Darnell McDonald calf injury. He's out of the game. This end, this looks like it's his wrist. We'll have to see how extensive it is. Injury inside the last two minutes, a charge timeout as well. You know, Frank, I understand. I understand Jim Druckenmiller run with the ball when he sees some open space. Right. I still don't see him being a quick, a quick type of quarterback that you're going to have, that, that you're going to call a quarterback draw with. Yeah. You know, he's not the kind of guy that's got the quicks to, to make a couple of quick moves, not break into the moves. open and do it. Right. Okay, take a look at the left tackle, number 74. See his right wrist gets stuck underneath his body. And then another 300, 400 pounds landing on top of him. Chad Pegues falling on top of him. Tippy Brown is also the offensive coordinator. Hey, he was telling us yesterday he's going to make a change next year and not be so involved as the uh, mm -hmm. play caller. He's more of a technically the play caller of the team. He basically, he basically not the uh, coordinator. Let somebody else do the hard work. He'll coordinate it all. Well, he is the quarterback coach as well. And he just says he's taking too much. So Dolphin right gun switch. Of the offense. Deep base fight. Always smash. On one. Ready? Break. Dolphin right gun zip. Dolphin right gun zip. Oh, oh. zip. Mike's 51. Mike's 51. Mike McGeorge. Blue 80. Assistant head coach and offensive coordinator. Blue Blue line 80. coach for the Dolphins. Crawford is in motion. Druck back to pass. Firing on the middle. Wide open is Hobbs. Hobbs with the 45. And that ball. Oh. Three. Oh, so loose. And stole the ball by Lamont Evans. And he picked it up. Absolutely 
Hobbs somehow lost control of the ball. Not somehow. That ball was absolutely stripped. Just absolutely stripped. Evans reached in and just pulled it out. So Lamont Evans just pulled that ball out. You see on the replay, he just went in before before the mantis, before Darrell Hobbs went down. He specifically stuck his hand on that ball. Check it out right here. Get over the play. So a big turnover, and now LA all of a sudden at the 37 of the axe. The pressure is Maddox, he's driven to the ground, but he got it off the sound, Eve McCullough, and it was Shante Carver who took down Maddox hard, kind of resembling the shot he got in on Ryan Clement and knocked out the outlaw quarterback for a while early in the year. One more look at the strip of the ball. Watch this. Right at the end of the play, Levon Evans reaches in. He feels the ball in his hand and rip. I, and I've seen guys try to do that on a regular basis. Everybody trying to get the ball taken away, but none. I haven't seen it work so effectively as that in a long, long time. Maddox hasn't taken a lot of clean hits this year, but he did on that play. Maddox firing, slight arm in, another vicious hit. That one was on Damon Gibson. I believe it was Corey Sawyer on the interception in the first quarter. But look at the there shock of Carver who knocked out Clement yeah. early in the year. Take a look at the, the shot that uh, he gives to Maddox at the end. And that's just that's just a, a lot of weight coming down right on top of Tommy Maddox. Well, Shaka was telling us he plays football like a gladiator. Off for a couple of years. It was a first-round pick of the Dallas Cowboys back in 94. And won a Super Bowl. The Barry Switches team in 95. Damon Dunn on the reception. Wide open. Making up for that last play. Damon Dunn Walker coming across Packers. the middle. Two timeouts left for the extreme. They do get the slight stoppage of this. Until the ball is placed. Clock still is not gone. They got a good break there. Maddox looking. Side arm, he was throwing it a little bit differently. I don't want to know if that oh. hit by Carver affected his throwing, but he seems to be hold up, hold up. slinging it. The side arm in a little bit. He yeah. got up. He got up, looking like he took a, sh a shot, like it hurt a little bit. Didn't show uh, what it was. Didn't really indicate what it was. But uh, you might be right. He might be a little sore. Yo, dude, dude, men 16. I want right. Four wideouts. For Los Angeles, McCullough is the lone back on second and 10 with 27 seconds remaining in the half. They're already in field goal range. It'll be about a 42-yarder from here. Maddox fires that one. Dunn's got it inside the 10, down to the 7. And he's going to call the timeout with 21 seconds to go. So the Memphis Maniacs, who we showed you the turnover ratio early in the game, had two picks to set up scores, have come back to form by giving the ball back twice here in the second quarter. That ball okay. well thrown right. between two covers. Rico Clark and, and yeah. Tyrone yeah. Bell on yeah. either side. Yeah. He made a nice yeah. catch. Good Mike concentration. Mania. Well, football fans coming up at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on UPN. More XFL action tonight. The San Francisco Demons take on the Las Vegas Outlaws at Sam Boyd Stadium. The loser of the game out of playoff contention. Demons Outlaws coming up at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on UPN. And if San Francisco wins, that would also knock out Memphis regardless of what the Yanks do today. And that's because if San Francisco would have the edge against the Yanks, you know, before, haven't beaten them two times this year. You know, before that little promo right then, talking about the game tonight, they showed Tommy Go. Maddox going to talk to Al Luger. That actually looked like he reached into his pads under his right shoulder. Maddox looking, <laughs> throwing, and Nothing. nobody open. He throws it away. Well, Al Lugenbo was telling me yesterday about that he gives his quarterback a lot of attaboys for throwing the ball away on a particular play. That That is a, a, a talent. That is a talent. To make that decision Shut to get rid of the ball, uh, it's, it's something Let's you can't teach these guys. Some of guys who look for the glory, want to make the play. But, Craig, this is a time when McDonald would have been big for them. He was a big, big, was a big, big red zone receiver. Eight touchdowns this year. You've seen him make a lot of great touchdowns down in the red zone, but he is gone for the day. Trying to free up Copeland, who was looking no. at the official briefly. Rico Clark was I on Copeland. No, baby, no! No, oh, you know better than that. Hey! Tom! Hey! 
Why don't they go rocket too? They should did that a long time ago. Let's go trip, trip, rocket, Florida special outlaw. I want to go. Outlaw, you said he will not see Jermaine Copeland dance. In fact, he may take a penalty and break that up himself. But most importantly, he doesn't want to see him even score on it. And two defense there. 12 seconds left. Maybe time for two plays. Good defense again. Incomplete. Rochelle could not hang on. He was not going to get in the end zone anyway. But they do have one timeout. And they're not going to waste any time here. You know, don't they have time to get one pass off? Eight they seconds? Got, they, without a doubt, they've got oh, time sorry, to get a pass off. But it's fourth down. Fourth down. They're going to go okay. for the points. Try and get yeah. it in. This is, uh, this is points that they didn't think that they were going to get. They had, Remember, they had lost the ball. They thought they were going to have an opportunity to drive it down. They lost the ball, but the great uh, play by Evans gets the ball back to him and gets him an extra three points. 25-yard field goal is good for Cortez, and L.A. will it's take a, it. They're now within seven. It's a scrum in the end zone for the football. Oh, man. It is Fan Appreciation Day here at the Liberty Bowl. In fact, one fan of the Axe win will share a $2,500 bonus, somebody, in this nice gathering at the Liberty Bowl, where the fans have turned out. And very respectable numbers for the Axe in their inaugural season. Are we included in that? Uh, no. I will pull out. <laughs> He's getting an attaboy. Tommy Maddox, struggle, is first struggle. You guys have struggled in the first half. What's going on out there? Well, they've come out and done some things well, and uh, we haven't adjusted to them. we got to go in at halftime, and the good thing is our defense has played well. We're still in the game, and we get the ball uh, first in the second half, so we just got to come out and put a good drive together. But a bad thing has to be the loss of McDonald, one of your star receivers. Well, yeah, but, uh, you know, we got to move on for that. We'll worry about that later. Uh, we hate that he's not out there with us, but uh, we got to pick up the pieces and go on. Now, one of the things that we got to remember here, too, a little stat, Memphis this year, the first half has had problems scoring points in the first half. 108 points they have scored the entire season. The second half has been Memphis's downfall. So far this season, the second half, they have only scored a total of 49 points, only six points scored in the third quarter. On the so kicking team, we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, when the second half comes along. A delay of game as Jose Cortez so anxious to not wait for the whistle to actually kick the ball. I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> that uh, kickers always sit there and wait for the ref to blow the whistle and drop their hand. I know Jose did not speak English when he oh, yeah. pushed one to high school, but he, he's doing oh, yeah. much better now in uh, right, let's go. paying attention. Yeah, there's a lot of hand signals in football, Hard too. Hard worker, this guy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All you need is hearing, really, on this one. It's a whistle. And there it is. Final play of the first half. A good hands team. Taken back by Jim Kitts. And that'll wrap up an entertaining first half with the Axe leading by seven points. Well, Jim, you guys come out. Your offense converts two turnovers into 13 points. That was a good start for you guys. Yeah, but we have to eliminate our turnovers. You know, we've done some things that way to really let them back in the game. Uh, we're moving the ball well, just uh, with the finish a little better. What is it about this team? That's the one thing that's killed you guys all year, turnovers. You know, I wish I had an answer for that, but uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to play hard, come out the second half, whole new ball game. Jim Druckenmiller with a touchdown pass and a conversion pass, leading the Axe to the 13-6 lead here in Memphis. Kippy Brown meeting with some of his players. Off to a good start. They took the 13-0 lead, but could not score and then turned it over twice in the second quarter, but did not allow a touchdown at least. Cortez with two field goals and a seven-point lead as the Ax try to hang on to their playoff positioning, needing two wins and some help. Diamond, a draining season for Al Luganville. He's going to be wondering a little bit what team has come out here today. Hottest team in the league had won four straight and have reverted back to their early season form a bit, but still very much in this game, now down by only seven. Big games as we wind up this XFL regular season. Last night's action with playoff implications in the East. We're in a New York state of mind, the Chicago Enforcers and the New York Hitmen. 
for the Chicago Enforcers. Not just a lot on the line, but everything on the line tonight. A loss in the Enforcers. You're done this season. Out of the playoff picture. Well, here we go, baby. Kevin McDougal trying to get Lillard in the zone. Gentlemen, Birmingham's playoff hopes are still alive, but it's real simple for them. They got to win tonight. That's great. Look out! And ball. He's touchdown. He did. Quincy oh, hey. Jackson with a touchdown. Oh, the draw got a man. Oh, the got touchdown. There's a back of pass. Oh, look out! Double pass. Oh, set for the second half for his axe with the team leading by seven at the half. Back in the axe locker room, you know, it's the dream of every athlete on every team to make it to the postseason. The XFL playoffs are looming and dreams are building. Here in the XFL, there's more, though, than pride and glory at stake. There's cold, hard cash. We'll get this money. Drama, intensity, raging battles. Yes! Yes! The XFL season has had it all. And with the playoffs coming, multiply the intensity by one million dollars. That's the prize for the winning team in the million dollar game. Million dollars. Whoa. <laughs> That's what comes to my mind. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Rich, I mean, who wants to be a millionaire? Some say money is bad for the soul, bad for the rock, bad for the road, bad for the heart, bad for the brain, bad for the everything, oh yeah! Million dollars. Muhammad. Taxes. <laughs> I pretty much have everything I want in life. I want a helicopter. A Bentley. Make a heck of an engagement ring if anybody's thinking about it. I'd do anything possible to, to get that money. Everybody wants money. Yeah, if you put a million dollars on our team with another team, hey, we're going to bite, scratch, kick, you know, tear off ears. But what I do for a mix, for a million dollars, I do just about anything. With a jock strap on and my jersey, and I'll run a nice curl route for you in some house shoes and take it to the house for you. If they need me to make a punt or, you know, get an interception, play on defense, I don't care. I'll do anything to get that money. <laughs> 
I think any team can be beat. I mean, Orlando, they have the best record, but they're not the best team. No respect, and the championship will be here in Orlando. What's it take to get some respect? I really don't care to think there's a favorite. I know we have a chance. That's all I'm concerned with. So anybody else, they're just in the way. We don't even care what kind of respect we get. Once we uh, cast that check and take home the trophy in the ring, you know, that's going to speak for itself. We're probably the one team that's maybe on a roll right now. We won our last four, and, and you know, people are starting to look at us as the favorites. Vegas just won't go away. We just need to continue winning, attain the goal as a team. The money will be there, but it's, it's starting to loom pretty large in all of our minds. If you're in this, in this for the money, that's not going to push you in the fourth quarter. I don't care what anybody says. It's a do or die situation. You got to go in there and win. And you have to have change your mentality and. And, uh, you know, you got to lay everything you have on the line. You win a million dollars is a great incentive, but um, I think even a greater incentive is everybody knowing in their mind and in their hearts that they won the first XFL championship game. In the spirit of pursuing that championship and the big bucks, Al Luganville moments ago to his team. You know and I know we played absolutely horrible, and we're down by seven. Upstairs, Craig Benavini with Bob Golick, and you got the flavor from Al Luganville. It was a throwback to the early in the season when the extreme were not forcing right. the issue and didn't play very well. And uh, as he said, though, they're only seven downs. The Axe let them back in in the second quarter. Well, there's no doubt that they have the tools, they have the weapons that can do this. Seven points for them really isn't anything. But right now, Memphis seems to have the momentum. They have the defense that's playing aggressively. If it, uh, it's going to be up to Maddox to try to find a way to exploit that aggressive defense, and uh, it's going to be up to the offensive line for Tommy Maddox to give him some protection. Maddox had only one interception in his last 134 attempts after six early in the season, but he threw two today in the first quarter. Again, first one going to Corey Sawyer. Again, he was being hustled and harried by the defender. Charles Jordan with a touchdown pass at that interception. Again, hustled again. Interception. That leads once again to a long run. Nice cutback. Patrick Sanford took it in from 30. They get 12 nothing. They got the conversion, and Shin Yamato liked what he saw as the Axe took a 13 nothing lead. LA came back with two Jose Cortez field goals. One a gift after Hobbs lost the ball late yeah. in the uh, half to get back into the game. The halftime stats courtesy of Miller Light. You take a look, and uh, both teams with two turnovers. The Maniacs with less time of possession. Uh, although winning the game, they've been getting the ball in pretty good field position from turnovers uh, and the like, so they're not having to move the ball as well. There you see Shinyamata's parents hanging out in the... Uh, in the What's stand. he shooting? I don't know. He's probably got a pretty good zoom lens, getting a shot of his son. Took a lot of... Did must have one of those... We talked about, uh, about to... Shinyamata being uh, well, the, only, the only Japanese uh, player to... To, be, to make it in, in professional first football. one, yep. First one to play in an NFL game over there. And there's lots, there's and lots here's, in, in Major League Baseball now. Yes. That's all that. Here's uh, Ontario Rochelle. He's got some room on the left side. Look out. And he's taken down. Good open field tackle by Corey Sawyer, who's had a strong game. The former Seminole makes the stop. Let's look at this. Let's look at the halftime stats one more time. And uh, you see the rushing yards. We, you would expect a little bit more rushing from the Express with uh, the way McCullough's been running lately and a little bit less from the Maniacs with the injuries to the running backs. But the Maniacs really are balancing out their attack much better, I think, than the, than the Express had anticipated. You know, you're in Memphis, the home of uh, Fed Express, so I know what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, jeez. They are the extreme. Asthmatic. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I just can't. 
Or just L.A., okay. Look out, Maddox taken down by Carver again. Dante Carver knows the quarterback's name very well, up close and personal, and that's the second time in a matter of a few plays. Boy, Shante, you're right. At the end of the first half, Shante Carver came in and just drilled Tommy Maddox. Once again, you'll see him at the bottom of your screen. Makes a move, hump move up underneath. Tommy Maddox just happens to be there. The extreme have been averaging over 30 points a game over the last four weeks. The most explosive offense in the league. They looked unstoppable, especially after putting 35 on the board against Vegas last week. Quick pass, Copeland, good hands, Copeland. Coverage by Johnson, Rico Clark over there. Now, Craig, can you, you there? do you understand why they're not using McConnell? It just seems like the run yeah. game. And I, I would understand so if they were felt like they had to come back and come back quickly and they were throwing the ball long. But they're not. They're throwing the short little dump passes, the little five yarders, three yarders, which essentially is what you do in a run game. Throwing the ball 26 times already in the game. 48 seconds. Open in motion, bothered at the line. Throw is short of the intended receiver, Damon Gibson, by Maddox. And again, Los Angeles will have to punt. Not able to pick off the uh, halftime momentum from the coach and drive the ball downfield. Well, I told you before that head coaches don't usually talk that much at halftime unless they have something to say. Al, uh, <laughs> Al, Al had a lot to say. Al definitely had something the to say. Drawing board going. <laughs> Talk to the defense and the whole team. I got some, uh, I got some shivers down my back here. That Noel Prefontaine will punt the ball again live after 25 yards. That would be the 44 of Memphis. Portal fumbled in the second quarter on the return. We'll get it right where he stood at the 25. So he was watching the film. Well, up to the 34, and he's taken down. Let's take a look at the East playoff picture, Bob. The Orlando Rage, they have clinched the division. They can, Chicago clinches with a win next week or a loss by New York, clinching a playoff spot. Now, the Hitman need a little help. They need to win next week at Birmingham in our game here on TNN and get a Chicago loss. The enforcers will be the host for the Rage. Birmingham out of it after blowing the game last night. Their sixth straight loss. It looked like they were going to beat the Rage, and it did not work out for Jerry Donato's Bolts. So they wind up next week being a spoiler team, trying to put the dent in the Hitman game. Now, for us, if the Hitman play the early game, that game's going to be in the world to them. They'll have to win that and then watch the Orlando game over on UPN and hope that Orlando can knock off Chicago. What would help that cause, if you're a Hitman fan, is to have L.A. win here today because then Orlando would need that win to potentially secure home field. To follow all that, you're doing very well. <laughs> You had me at hello. <laughs> because L.A. plays Saturday night. And uh, there, this game against San Francisco. So it always gets confusing no matter what hey, football hey, league hey, you hey, talk hey, about. Hey, when it winds down in so many left, possibilities. Right, 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 right. But uh, the basics are L.A. and Orlando are in the driver's seat here. And right, 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 right. have a good shot at hosting at least. Mike 53, uh, Mike 53. Craig, Craig. Blue 40. Stop. My head you got enough? Blue 40. It's enough for you? It's enough for me. Check out the rest of the next event. Look at the Oregon go! He'll shut up the extreme defense getting across the 50, down to the 47. Finally, somebody trying to outdo the rushing yardage of their quarterback, Jim Drunkenmiller. Good block right shot. Lead ball, by right. fullback Roosevelt, or, excuse me, Jim Kitts. He gets in and makes a nice lead block. That was nice by uh, Bo Morgan as he, he kind of... He didn't attack the line of scrimmage really quickly, but he saw that hole open up, and man, did he accelerate. Did not get a gracious spot as they brought it back to midfield, but it was a game of 16 for Bo Morgan. And Morgan's going to get another handoff. Interesting here, a couple more yards. You know, coming in, he felt that without Rashawn Salam, uh, L.A. might have an edge uh, against the rush, but even with Morgan and Sanford, the Axe have done very well without their top running back. We talked about this earlier, Bob, yeah. the second half scoring woes of the Axe, so left. and nobody really has an explanation. Left 11. On one. No, but, and especially, if we break it down even further, the third quarter for the Maniacs, this year, the entire year, only six points scored in the third quarter. So if you even get worse, hopefully they can break for the Maniacs, they can break that pattern. There was even some talk of Chuck and Hobbs about literally staying out on the field at halftime. Kimmy Brown <laughs> considered that. Jeff Russell 
makes the stop. Well, whatever they do with the right, story wise, they've got to put together the the real nice one. Uh, Kippy wants I'll to pick up those bucks for those motivational speeches in the all season, I guess. Go, you know, those halftime speeches. You're going to come out in the second half. You come back and you win. You do something like that. You put it on your resume. Kippy, the NFL year for nine years, said it was his time. A Tennessee native from Sweetwater, Tennessee, the head coach. Oh, Morgan Room again, left side, a big story this game. The offensive line of Memphis doing a good job against the tough L.A. front. Oh, keep on coming. Opening up holes for the back. Come on, just keep coming to me. Nice counter, counter tray right right to right backside right garden tackle, pulling the the way. With Bo Morgan, you don't got a guy who's just got blazing speed. So you, I don't feel that you can really mess around too much. You got it. If you're going to give it to him, give it to him straight. Let him attack the line of scrimmage. Don't have him, you know, don't push his foot around on the backfield. Trying to decide where you want to go. You got to make the decision and you got to go. Great athlete. He was a quarterback at Air Force. Only player in NCAA history to rush and pass for over a thousand yards in a season. Jordan. And he falls down at the 13, Charles Jordan. The connection quits again. One of the most feared of the XFL. Drops to Jordan for a big gain of 19. You know, he sat in between four defenders, four L.A. extreme defenders, wide open. Now, even though it's his own coverage, everybody's in their zone, you've got to be able to react to the quarterback. You've got to be able to see when the quarterback's looking, where he's going to throw the ball. And when that ball's getting ready to leave, you've got to react. You've got to attack the guy who's going to. Jordan only second to Stepford Williams in receiving yards in the XFL. Drop going again. Nice pass. Beauty to Jordan. Picked up a gain of only about seven in the play, but great timing there on the quick out. Right, on, right, to drop. right over the hands of Romando Stallings also. Go? Stallings had his right hands go. up. Looked like he was going to swat it down, but just out of his reach. Our left slot, slant right. All right, here we go. We're getting it. Let's go. Our left slot, slant right. On one. Ready, Let's get it, baby. Hey, quick slant. Come on, Bob. You can't mess around. I mean, you can't pick you a better one down bear. here. Bear. Always seem to have success. Set. Big Roosevelt pops is the fullback in front of Bo Morgan. And he's going to be the lead blocker for Bo Morgan, but did not spring Morgan. It looked like he might have had a yeah. spin there, but it was quickly gobbled up by Eric Harris. And like I said, he, he doesn't have the initial oh. speed right off the ball tip. To, to be right, able to go. make the cut. One guy if, the, if the hole's He's not there for him like it right. wasn't, he had to make a cut back. Right. It took his speed right. away from him. Let's go. Here we go. Strong, strong right. Take dive right. Quarterback keep pass right on one. Ready for it? Your wheel, your wheel. It's a third down and four. Bear, Memphis bear, bear. is 0 for 3 on third down in the Blue game 80. so far. On the season, Doing pretty well on third down. 39.6%. Back to play ball. The versatile back. We told you he could throw, he could spot you with a run, and he could catch it too. Right, nice going. speed oh. getting himself out there. And like I said, he got the momentum going. He got out in the flat and they could not keep up with him. Watch him come out of the backfield there, 32. Run right along the goal line. Number two, Ron Carpenter trying to go make a play. But when you're catching the ball on the one, there ain't a whole lot you can do to stop him going in. It's up, it's up. Memphis one out of two in the conversion. So far today, well, Memphis has, has matched their third quarter scoring for the season. Jordan in motion. Morgan running for a tremendous hole. Huge hole. It was Sanford actually on the carry and a tremendous hole led by Roosevelt, Potts, and company. And the Axe are up by 14. What a way to start the third quarter for Memphis. Well, we heard L.A. talking about coming out sharp. We've got the ball to start. We're only down by seven. They didn't go anywhere, and yep. then the Axe took over. Oh, Morgan, a seven-yard catch. Druckenmiller's second touchdown pass of the game. And like we, running into conversion, Bob, 20-6. And, and like we said, Memphis uh, matching the third, third quarter scoring for the year. Just uh, basically took all past statistics and said, the hell with it, we're just going to go out and take this at it and get some more points. Rochelle following a wall out to the 29 for the extreme. Well, Bo Morgan, you're a guy that does all kinds of stuff for this team. That's a good way to get started in the second half. Yeah, it is. It's about time uh, we did something in the second half. And these fans are great for coming out and supporting us today. Hopefully we can keep the intensity up and uh, put, put on a show. Look at those fans back there, man. They are just up. 
Fan Appreciation Day. And appreciated by the players, too, which is you know, always nice to see, particularly right in the, the middle of the moment. Uh, forward to recognize uh, what the fans have done. There have been some great fans here in Memphis in this inaugural year. As McCullough takes it back to the 30-yard line, and the experience of coming out to see the XFL, we've seen it, Bob, in every stadium yep. we've gone to, that you know, there's an atmosphere that just is electric in the crowd here, and a crowd throughout the XFL, Absolutely. something you don't get from, the, quite frankly, from the, the national press. You don't hear about this kind of stuff, but, you're, you're, but if you see it and feel it, the people here know what we're talking about, and certainly the NFL players we've seen on the sideline this year, the games and the players themselves. Run! 48 Gibson in motion. Max going to hand off to McCullough here. So McCullough gaining about five. So again, Memphis with their slim hopes, but looking better as this game moves on. Have to win their remaining two. They need the Demons to lose two, including tonight in Las Vegas. But they also have to overcome that what started out as a 49-point differential and has now chopped down to 35 with Las Vegas. They played the Outlaws next week so they can make up a chunk of that next week but they'd probably like to get it down at the neighborhood of the, in the 20s at least so you can hope for a big win next week and have a shot yeah because uh, you're talking about uh, the best defense we're talking about Las Vegas you're talking about the best, best defense the dealers of doom as they've named themselves and uh, they look like they're a pretty good tough tough team to score points got against Tyrone Bell right now right now uh, take a look at him on the field I'll tell you what, it has been, every stadium we've been to has just been full of people just excited to, to watch football. And, uh, you know, a lot of the teams, a lot of the cities we're at are teams that aren't used to having, aren't used to having football. So there is a lot of the excitement comes from. You'll see here, lots coming from the left side of your screen. Oh, right there, a little friendly fire. And Tyrone takes a shot from his own player. Antonio Anderson. Yeah, that Antonio little, Anderson, who was a Keystone Copsman over there. As big as Tyrone Bell is, Antonio Anderson is bigger, <laughs> is going to win that just about every time. The sun breaks out here at the Liberty Bowl. Kind of day you need some sunglasses, too. There on the field, Maddox throws, oh, quick slant, nice. as Rochelle, nicely done. Again, L.A. going without their dependable touchdown receiver, Darnell McDonald, who was hurt in the first half of the cap. A muscle injury that could be torn, could be out for a while. Yeah, it depends on the degree of uh, the tear, how badly it's torn. Uh, but I'll tell you what, that, that is one of those plays, that slant, that they, they just right. cannot defend unless you get someone, someone up underneath it or you get a hand on the ball as it's coming in. Because the coverage was perfect on that pass. Four wideouts for the extreme. In motion is Gibson. Maddox going to hand off anyway. McCullough has some room right side. Thought about cutting back. Bad idea. Marvin originally, Marvin Thomas on the stop. John Marvin Thomas, the first man to make a contact. John Williams coming up. Great job of run support on the outside. They were not going to let it. In fact, McCullough looked to see if he had a chance to cut back. But even the backside pursuit was very good. It was Thomas, Marvin Thomas, number 90, really stringing it out. Or McCullough had nowhere to run. Couldn't bounce it outside. And you look, you try to see if he cut it back inside. Couldn't cut it inside either. Beautiful job by Thomas. Memphis coming in with a fifth way to defense, but second against the run in the league. You've seen that today. Not, not, many, not, many, not many of the teams running a 3-4 defense, but they're running it, playing it very well. Flag is down. Maddox goes out of bounds. He was looking for Damon Dunn. But there was a flag on the play. Well, if there's a flag the down backfield. There's a flag down the defensive backfield before the ball's thrown, I'm thinking that one of the receivers is being held. Holding on the receiver. Uh, the, the 35? Okay, five-yard automatic for 25. Number 25? Yeah, the, the ball's not Holding. Thrown. Holding. 25 defense. Yeah. Apparently five yards, previous spot, automatic first down. The ball's not thrown yet. The only thing they can throw on is a, def a defensive back or a linebacker grabbing the receiver. Right here in the middle of your screen, you see him grab the jersey. He got beat. Was not letting uh, was not letting Damon Dunn get too far away from him, and that's a heck of a way. That's definitely a way of staying with the receiver if you don't get caught. Kevin Cobb, that one one of the more original nicknames in the back of his jersey. Kevin Cobb. <laughs> Cobb uh, must have thought a while over that one. Over the middle, Copeland got it inside the forty. Down to the thirty. Hit me like the league of it. He hate me. Shocker. Mm -hmm. Kev Cobb. Two 
Zeus 45. Here we go, let's go. Let's go, Zeus. Hey. Zeus, Zeus. 45, first down, right? All right. Go! Good cut. Pick it up a cuddle. A couple yards there. Hogan makes the stop on McCullough. Gain of four yards for Saladin. Offensive line's doing a nice job of opening the holes up for uh, for, for Saladin McCullough. It should, it should actually try a little bit more. You know, blur these guys down a little bit. Make the defensive alignment a little more aware of the run game, and maybe you won't get such an aggressive pass rush on your quarterback. Go! 28! Run! Uh, Lugan goes. 48! Set! And Commander gives Maddox the plays the quarterback coach. Maddox firing and receiver was up. Where's the flag? No flag. Wow. I thought he was hit. Damon Dunn going for the ball. John Williams right with him, but uh, I think the only thing that may have saved Williams on that one is that he turned he turned to make a play on the ball. Take a look at it here. Everybody was bumped early. Left side of your screen, he does get bumped, but at least Williams turns to make a play on the ball. And if you're playing for the ball and not just just face guarding the man, sometimes the, the refs will look at it as incidental contact. Ball hit him in the head too. 48. Maddox, good rush on him. Gets rid of it. Again, Shaka Carver was smelling Maddox right behind him. Incomplete Kellogg's with the coverage on Gibson. And I'm, not sure what a Maddox, and I'm not sure what a Maddox smells like, but Shock has definitely <laughs> go. got the scent. <laughs> Probably don't want to know. At the, the Probably not. Point of the game. That's a wide trip. Well, now here we go. Down one. Down down again. It's third and six yards. Go! Third down, and third down but actually it is now, a, they're going to go for this here. On fourth down. Open in motion. Well, offside defense. Yeah, they picked off, but offside. Offside from the defense. That's Looked like a big break. It'll bring up fourth and okay. five yards. Looked like Rico Clark, when the uh, his receiver was in motion, Rico jumped up on the line. 27 defense. You know Apparently hey, five you know yards. You know what? Repeat fourth They've been down. using that damn motion all day. They've been offside three times. They never get stopped. But you guys can see us when we're outside. Two times they've been outside with us, high motion, and nothing gets called. Oh, that was, was going to play. Watch top of your screen right there. Rico Clark yeah. goes to make contact with his guy, definitely That's crosses right. the line of scrimmage. Big break there because now it's fourth and short, fourth and one. Can certainly run the ball now. Have that option with McCullough in the backfield. And behind him, he's quickly in motion. He's getting the right in motion. He may have drawn another flag. McCullough was taken, but I think Gibson's motion again caused the axe to go offside. Well, it was the left defensive end. I didn't see who was in there, but it, they better hope it was on the defense after a run play like that. You know, it's a good move, Bob, because a lot of times the players are anticipating the guy in motion, and as he gets to the line, they take off, and it's sort of a fake. He stopped right at the line. Yep. Offside, defense number 90 in the neutral zone at the snap. Penalty will result in a first down, five yards. A, a set play. Watch what, watch what happens here. You saw just like Craig said, the motion guy gets to the line of scrimmage, and normally he, his motion times up with the snap of the ball. Has to, yeah. Uh, he stops, and you know, sometimes as a defensive lineman, you're looking for any kind of clue to give you a quicker jump on the ball. Open in motion. Now the defense got to worry about that play. Two penalties. Big penalties, Gibson sneaking in, and that's sort of been the story as Gibson gets the first down of Memphis this year. You know, they played well at times. They seem to make these, these penalties just at the wrong time or cough the ball up. Good choice, Tommy. Wide trips, wide trips, 43 sprint. Well, the there we go. Face you saw there. It's a wide trip, wide trip, 43 sprint on one, right? And Luganville, the son of the head coach, Tom, radioing back to the quarterback. The last play was a butte because they had him in sprint away from Shaka. You heard him call sprint again, so I, I think they're trying to keep him away from Shantae Carver. In the backfield, McCullough gets around Carver. He's going to break in with a touchdown. And the LA Extreme, thanks to two fourth down penalties for the Axe, 
Keep the drive going. Do not have to bring the field goal unit on and score the touchdown. 14 yards, 14 yards on the score. Memphis, like you said, shooting themselves in the foot. Causing their own problems. Went from the fourth and sixth. Two offside penalties gives the extreme. A first down and beautiful call. Great call by Jim Barker, the offensive coordinator. They kind of sucked in Carver's. You talked about there. They brought him deep in the backfield. And McCullough went flying by him. So now it's an eight-point game. This is a huge conversion attempt here to bring him to within seven. Trouble for Maddox. Dumps it up quickly. Richard Hogan, Anthony Marshall. When Saturday McCulloch caught that, when Saturday McCulloch caught that ball, I thought he's powerful enough to take it in. But look at that. Marshall and Hogan just crushed him. Crushed him at the one-yard line. So as the third quarter winds down, the extreme are back with an eight. They're at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Craig Benavini, Bob Golick, the Maniacs cheerleaders, back here at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Good to have you with us again for the XFL on TNN. We wrap up our regular season coverage. Next week, we'll be in Birmingham where the Hitmen will need a win to stay alive in their hope for a playoff spot. They'll also need a Chicago loss. But here, a lot on the line as well out west. Good kickoff deep in the end zone. And that went the distance. It'll come back out to the 20 where the Axe will start off. Saladin McCullough, you put up some points for your team, but you weren't here in the first half. Was this a change in game plan at halftime, or did you just miss the team bus, buddy? No, nah, I'm always here to play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're just struggling right now. We're trying to get back. We're fighting from behind, so we'll be okay. Now, has the injury to McDonald uh, meant that you're going to get the ball more in the second half, and if he's not back, will you get the ball more the rest of the season? Um, you know, we're going to spread it around and keep everything going the way we've been doing it. Third quarter winding down, and that'll be it for the third quarter. So we'll start the fourth with the Axe uh, adding to their seven-point halftime lead by a point. Good crowd here at the Liberty Bowl. Axe leading by eight as we head to the fourth. Over 21,000 on hand at the Liberty Bowl for the Axe home finale this year, including Jimmy Abada's parents, some from a long way, including that man right there, Jimmy Abada. He doesn't miss himself too many times when he's on the big screen. No, he's always watching those He's very <laughs> much in tune with that. <laughs> wow. Pitch by Trump. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, For Kendrick Sanford, who has a 30 yard touchdown. He puts his nose down into Ron Carpenter, and he drives Carpenter like a hammer into a nail there, getting near midfield. That was a, one of the most interesting plays I've seen in a long time. They called it a flip 90, and what happened is everybody went. To the, to the offensive right, except for the guy getting the ball. Check it out. Everybody goes right, except Sanford. Holy cow, look at that. And if the problem is, when you're at defense, a lot of times you're reading your blocker. You're reading the, reading the line. You're taking all the keys to take where the ball is going to go. Just And unfortunately, they read their keys, read everything, except Sanford going to the left all by himself. What number? The encroachment. Offside defense number 93, unabated to the quarterback. Five yards, first down. I was wondering decent. about that one. Unabated to the quarterback. Does that get you any extra points on them? Check it out here. You know, you're going to see everybody going to the top of the screen offensively. All the defenders reading that way. And he pitches it back to Sanford going all by himself. If it wasn't for the safety getting a good carpenter, getting a good angle. And he wouldn't have been slowed down enough for anybody to make a tackle on the guy. And even then he drove him a good five more yards. That's what they call open field, right? That's what they call open field. Rock, nothing open there. Gain of a couple for Sanford. How about the Memphis rushing, though, without Salam today? Very effective with the duo of Morgan and Sanford. You know, there are some people saying that without all those, all those guys injured, there may be 60 passes by Drunk and Miller. Right, but, right. but they were way wrong. Rock is throwing 17 times today. On a tidy 11 for 17, two touchdowns. 51, 51. 28-year-old from Northampton, Move Pennsylvania, 40. just outside of Allenville. Handing off again, big hole. Oh. 
You know, they haven't churned out the three and four yarders throughout, but yeah. they've been able to bust some big runs. All right, here you go. With good yardage. All right, here you go. Let's go. I left. Pass six weeks. Now expect the blitz here. Bring it from black. I left. Pass six weeks. Oh. Six from the eight. Dart on one, ready, break. Jimmy oh, Brown. Miguel be here. Talk, uh, grew up 40 miles out of South Knoxville. Mike 59. Mike 59. What the big Elvis fan. He says you have to love the country too if you're from Sweetwater, Tennessee. So he's a big music fan. Rock and Miller in traffic, gonna take off. Got a little block from the referee. For the game, it's a first down. Good job, fellas. Good job, fellas. <laughs> Oh, damn. I thought I had the first. The first oh, they have not marked it yet. Good job, fellas. Oh, no, I believe they have. Yes. Wide open. Players. I'm going to get home. Okay, here we go now. Yeah. This is damn. Damn. He's on the now. Drunk, you got me? All right, all right. All right, slot. Ride right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Get some water in there if you can. Hey, hey taxing Bob is it for the head coach? No, let's, let's, hey, let's go in. Call the plays. You know, Kippy said he does not want to do that next year. Once we have a right, quarterback coach, hard count, hard count. Now. Really be more involved so in the right slot, ride right, hard three. Ready? Now listen, you heard him say hard count. Hard count means that he's going to give a, ver a lot of inflection right in the right count. Try to draw the other side off. Well, you can hey, there you go. Hunt. Hunt. off Sanford. Got a couple of yards on first down. Yeah, for Richie made the stop. For the head coach to call the plays, I mean, I, I think a lot of coaches want to be in a position where they have that kind of control. But after a while, there's so Let's many go. things that they have their eyes on that it's, like, it's almost like, man, I, I, I don't know if I can, can you know, do this and pay attention to all the other things. Go strong left zip. Deep face left. Always to smash on one. Ready, break. If he was the offensive coordinator for Jimmy Johnson in Miami, so it's a Mike role 51, he's used Mike to. 51. Former quarterback for Memphis. Seven, uh, 1975. Blue 80. Hunt. Rock back to pass. Pressured. Look out. He somehow squeaks through a couple of guys before Matt Kennelly took him down behind the line of scrimmage for the sack. Thanks. I don't know how that, that, that's what that big that's what, body got through about four I, guys. I don't know. He just is toughed it through. Dolphin, dolphin. That's what this offensive line would call a lookout block. So Look dolphin, out. Left. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to play quarterback. L.A. Special. I should read on one. Ready, break. L.A. Special. Look out. Yeah. Mm. Hey. Let's we'll see, we'll see what they got the special Mike for Jimmy. L.A. One. Ten. Blue 40. Blue 40. Rocking back. Robbing oh, one yeah. has hard. Touchdown. Touchdown, Maniac. Daryl Hobbs. And Hobbs beat Ricky Parker. It was a beautifully timed play and a great lead pass. Yeah. Softly feathered in there by the quarterback, Drunken Miller. L.A. Special X Reed. The X receiver was Hobbs. He's the wide receiver split to the weak side. He's the one that reads. Do I break it to the outside? Do I break it to the inside? He reads what the quarterback gives him. We saw it there. He broke it to the inside knowing that the inside slant's going to be an easier throw for Druck. Takes it, beats him to the end zone. Touchdown. Right, so now a 14-point edge, and every point is important. Not only for the game, but the uh, playoff chances. I'm going to make up the differential in Vegas. They're two for three in the conversion today. Much better. 27% average coming in. Rock rolling. Not much to throw at. Trying to find some room. Oh, flash thrown on Hobbs as he was uh, covered by Ricky Parker. And it might have been on Parker defending. Which could move that to the one-yard line. Defense with a hold. Holding. Okay. Replaying. Let's get on the show. Let's get a look at the touchdown one more time. Top of your screams, you see that Hobbs making the double move. He'll start it to the outside, break, and then break it back inside. He's got room, he's got open area, and he's got the speed to get away. Nice throw by Druckenmiller. Man, he has come a long way as a quarterback. Druckenmiller with three touchdown passes today. This season has been so good for Jim Druckenmiller. 
Some call it a last chance, and you talked about it earlier, that he's been studying coming into the off days, something he's, he's picked up from quarterbacks he's worked with, like Dan Marino and Steve Young in his NFL time with the offensive Niners. They're at the one now, trying for the conversion. He's got it again. Man, he's got it. Three out of four of the conversion, and it's 27 12, and the differential is down to 34 with Vegas in their playoff hope. with the punt. 27 12, a shocker. Here in Memphis, the Axe by 15. Next Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on NBC, a change in the schedule. San Francisco Demons versus the LA Extreme. The game originally scheduled for next Sunday. The game now, which could very well have a Western Division title on the line, especially with LA losing this game here so far today. It's next Saturday, fans, in Los Angeles, 5 o'clock local time out in LA. Fans in Southern California can call Ticketmaster for tickets at 213-480-3232. 213-480-3232. Next Saturday, in L.A., and if, uh, if the Extreme lose this game, Bob, and the Demons win their game, it will be for first place. We saw Jim Druckenmiller, Daryl Hobbs, the connection that has made this victory so smooth so far. Potential victory, I guess we should call it. Yep. Over the 27-12 lead, and uh, the Extreme not really showing any, any tremendous explosiveness yet. You know they're going to have to go away they're, as much as they might want to have, have wanted to use Sunday McCullough. They haven't used them much. You're going to have to get away from them now. They only have 10 minutes left, and they got to open it up with Maddox. It will be Gibson at the 15. Damon Gibson, good return, man, finding a seam. Got to the 26, but you know what? Very good coverage all day long for mm -hmm. the special teams of the Axe. At that time, it was Keith Crawford. Well, Coach, you you guys have struggled offensively in the second half all year long. This looks like a different second half team. Well, not all year long, but we've had some struggles like everybody else. But uh, you know, his execution is doing things right, things right, and not turning the ball over. Do we accept? Do we expect to see more passing offense from you guys since points could be a factor in the playoff race? Yeah, we're going to run our offense. We've got nothing to lose. Rockin Miller with three touchdowns for the second time this year against Chicago back on the tenth. The lead high, Maddox with four twice, and Jeff Brown for Orlando. With four. The ball is on the question, and Rico Clark had some thoughts about not only picking it, but heading into the end zone. Well, we told you about the playoffs, and the only way Memphis gets in, they win two, and, and uh, uh, San Francisco loses two. Then it comes down to this point differential, which is was 49 coming into the game. Now it's 34 points. It's turn point differential with Las 48. Vegas. Plus, next week, they get Las Vegas. Need help. So they can at least, as Copeland tries to catch it, they can take care of the differential on mm -hmm. their own next week against Vegas. But they really need a one-point Vegas win, a very slim Vegas win tonight. Right. To not extend that differential and really could use another score or two right here today. Well, they know what it's all about. And you, you heard Kippy Brown. I mean, it's whether whether it's because he wants to keep his offense in sync or whether he wants to build the score up. You hey, if you're if you're this Memphis team, the Maniacs team, you got to go for as many as you can get right now. Madison under pressure. He's hit hard by Marvin Thomas. The ball scoring three. having words with Marvin Thomas. Flag thrown. Maddox, a fiery guy. He, want, he is a guy that likes to fight his own battle. One of your guys did something, too. Hey, back up! Well, there's no doubt there's some frustration going on there. It was number nine, 90, Marvin Thomas, coming in to make the hit on Tommy Maddox. And, boy, after the play was over, Tommy just went straight to him. There it is. You see Marvin Thomas... Right there, catches him underneath the arm. Oh, he threw a couple of little extra Personal shots foul. in there for good measure. Defense. Personal foul. Offense. Those penalties cancel. <laughs> and fourth down. It, it was a clean shot. In fact, it was a beautiful, if you're a defensive lineman, it's a beautiful two. shot. Catch him under the arm like that. One, huh? But when he took him down, there was a little extra jabbing going on by Marvin, by Marvin Thomas. Oh, 
and then Jante Garber yeah. throw the ball to Tommy Maddox. Kind of a kind of a lame sort of, sort of attack, but and you got versatile players out here. You got a cutter as the third string quarterback. <laughs> Paul Morgan does everything, and Shante Carver says well, that could be a third string quarterback. He contained the punt. Ball wide after 25 yards. Great moving. Punt from the left foot. Arnold at the 35. Up to the 40. Breaks the other way. He's taken back by Damon Gibson. A little bit chippy here in Memphis as the Axe look to add their 15 point shocking lead over LA. All right, well, we've got it done. Uh, we listen to our music. We've got a flag down the field. We're going to figure out what's going on. And on the receiving team during the run, penalty be 10 yards from the end of the run. First down, Memphis. Twenty-seven, twelve, Memphis. Eight twenty-seven to go. Back in Memphis, the Axe up by 15. A team that had lost. Three of the last four games against the team that had the hottest in the league, and won four straight, six out of seven. Look at those numbers. 308 total yards. We told you they've been averaging 311 yards per game. Not have been able to put the points on the board, right? Today they found the formula for putting it all together. With the game, they're 12 over their average this year scoring. Tommy Maddox, into that last series, you started a fight with about 650 pounds of D-linemen. What was going on in there? Well, you know, I'm not going to let anybody punch me after the play. And, uh, you know, for the officials to sit there and let that crap go on is unbelievable. But, you know, that's the way it is. Well, you're a brave man, but are you done for the day? I don't know. I, you know, I still think we got a chance to win. Well, Tommy said he got an extra punch from Marvin Thomas. Perhaps we can catch up with Marvin on the sideline. See if that was the game. Looked like there was some extra business after the actual hit. I bet he says no. <laughs> we'll see. Sanford gets up to the 37, 38 yard line. Looks like Max may be coming out. And well, we also saw Milanovic starting to warm up a little bit, but that's we'll that should be normal. Just uh, being the seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Might want to just spark him a little bit. Gun, gun, gun. Much on the line tonight in the UPN game. San Francisco, if LA loses, faces the possibility of losing and being out of the playoffs or winning and all of a sudden having a shot at the division title on NBC next week at 8 o'clock in LA on Saturday. Nice pass against Smooth Hands Arnold. Gets up to the 48. And if you looked at this game and wonder which team was hot, and in first and which team was in last, you'd surely say the team in the teal yep. is one of the better teams. Absolutely. They today have put everything together. It was, it's very strange. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, yeah. we took this L.A. team and watched them against what was the, then the best undefeated and the undefeated team in the league, the Rage, and watched the uh, L.A. Express just dismantle them. Well, today, they come in with this, the, the, uh, the extreme with a team that is just can't be stopped. They come up against Memphis, and they can't do anything to get points on the board. First down for the Axe. They're going to hand off, use some thoughts. Stanford. Shelly. On three. Okay. Okay. All right, here you go. Let the clock run now. Here you go. All right, zip. All right, zip. Pass 56, 58 Z read. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I ride zip. Pass 56, 58, Z read. I'm on it. Hey, Nick drugs like a dog well, looking his child. What, what's the play that he's we, so shocked about? We heard Z. We heard X read before that was the Hobbs. Z is the receiver at the top of the field. That's Jordan. It'll be his read. They can't off. He's going to go downtown. Drug was hit and thrown around. It's intercepted. Ron Carpenter, but there is a flag down. That might have been a late hit. This may come back. Carpenter's taken out at the 36. Let's see Druck looking at the ref. And yes, it's roughing the passer against on. the LA Extreme. Well, part of the problem is, is that when you call a read, you have to be able to have a chemistry with your receiver. Druck and Miller read that he was, he was on a go. Roughing the passer, 97 defense. 
15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. There you go. Is this after the actual No, this is or or part of the process. It's part of the process. Oh, it, so this will, you'll see the hit here. And it was that extra throw, the extra toss down. But what Druck did, Druck read Jordan on a go. He saw him break to the inside and throw it deep. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, and what Jordan did, Jordan broke it off on a curl. And so at that time, but at that, by that point, uh, Druck and Miller already had a defender in his face, so he couldn't see that the, that the, uh, the route had been cut short. And what Dave Ritchie did was absolutely dumb because he cost his team the interception on a late hit that had nothing to do with the play, didn't cause a, a bad pass. And yeah, we'll, we'll watch here. You're going to see Jordan at the top of the screen. Drunk is, right now, he's seeing it go because he's just sprinting down the field. Oh, he turned but as time, the yeah. ball is, as Drunk is getting hit, that's when uh, Jordan decides to turn it inside. And the ball at that point, he can't see the receiver anymore. And there's the, uh, as you see, the, you the know, end of the play, the little extra curriculum. He did let up a little bit. I think it was more the hit than the throw because he made contact with him well after the, the actual pass, that first hit. Right. And then he threw him. Marcus Crandall is coming on. Shit. In the middle of the sequence here, he hands off to Bo Morgan. Welcome. They may have been shaken up on that play. I just have a feeling at this point with four minutes left, they say, you know what, let's just get Druck out of there. They're bringing the defense hard on him. The numbers today, 150 yards passing. You saw this total offense today, well over 300. I don't know. With the, we'll ball, pick it up when we come back, but with the point ball. differential, every point is critical ball, ball, for Memphis ball. right now. Jim, you're over here on the sidelines relaxing, but there's a point differential that could come into play in the playoffs. Would you like to be back out there, and how do you feel about that? Well, you know, you know, Marcus, you know, it's a, it's a, rough, it's a rough sport for the quarterback here, so you never know what could happen. So we gotta get Marcus some time, get him in there, let him get some reps, and you know, we're, we're playing to win. But you guys do need points. Wouldn't you like to still be in there? Yeah, we would. There's no doubt about it. But you know, it's a decision we're going with right now, and that's the way it's gonna be. All right, we'll follow up with. Uh, Timmy Brown's got his thoughts on this with 4.08 remaining here in the fourth quarter. The Axe by 15 at three quarterbacks with Crandall after a three touchdown effort from Brock. I thought originally maybe he was shaken up by that hit, but that obviously is not the case. Crandall, certainly a very good quarterback, was the start at the beginning of the year. He can throw it as well. Paul Morgan drops the ball on the third and ten. And now they're going to. Hey, I couldn't. I couldn't. He forced the punt or maybe a uh, trick play here. Oh, Just get it all. Chris, got to get it all. Well, that's kind of a hard de decision to understand from my shoes here, Bob, thinking that if you know if your slim playoff hopes are, are all contingent on this point yeah. differential, why would you take the guy out who's having a big game against the very tough extreme? I, you know, can, I can only think that they just... You know, they want to try and keep the other guy healthy. Oh, it doesn't mean anything next week. If you, if you don't cut the difference. I agree with you. I don't know. Well, so nice punt, though. Listen at the six. Breaking down quickly. Nice tackle. Keith Crawford after a gain of about six right back. So 326 oh, left. Hey, Kippy Brown again, back. Still lead by 15. Fans, right? We win it. Well, Coach, right now, you guys trail Las Vegas by 34 points. They still have to play tonight. Did you even think about going for it right there to try and get some more points on the board? No, the most important thing is to win a game for these great Memphis fans and get a win under, under our belt. We've got next week to play. We go to Vegas. We'll take care of some of that when we get out there. Do you think that point differential with them still being able to play might be too much to make up? No, no. Every game's different. We'll go out there and throw everything at them, and anything can happen. But first things first, hey, we made up. Oh! He's done for the day. Yes, yes. All right, that's Kippy's answers. Uh, Maddox filing incomplete. Oh, he got me 
Uh, he may say the differential is uh, too much, not too much to make up, but the, by the actions of not going for it on the fourth and seven and then switching quarterbacks, and nothing against Crandall, but you know he's not the starter for whatever reason that is by Kippy. Druckenmiller hot, three touchdowns, uh, approaching the league high of four in a game. I don't, I don't understand the position. 150 yards passing, over no. 50, uh, well, 60 yards. Can you get it? Uh, running the ball, so you know, I, you know, he, he's looking at it from the, the, the respect of just getting it one play, one game at a time. 48. You know, he's not going to sit there and analyze it like we're going to do. Right. Which you know, right or wrong. That, that's the nature of his beast as a, as a coach. He's just going to take it one at a time. And, you know, after, after that shot that uh, the drunk took, you probably started thinking, you know what? Protect him a little bit. He's holding the ball. He's running the back of the yard. He's not going to help us. Okay? Make sure we secure. All right. So we're going to run it up. Help a job. Help a job. Huh? Run it up. We're going to run it up. No. We're talking about run the ball. No, we're going to stop blocking. So the important thing is holding on to the ball. Going to go after it, try and block it. Maddox trying to bomb downtown. Damon Dunn overthrown. Brandon, this is a long shot as we talked about all the uh -huh. time. To make up that many points, it's really a, a long shot. But it is the only hope that they have clinging to try and make the playoffs is win two and, and win by as much as possible, right. even to the point of. Uh, Back doing up, plays that are unusual. Four and seven <laughs> down deep. But I mean, you're still talking about a situation where they're going to have two Come losses on, by San Francisco. I mean, right. you know, we're sitting here counting points on the point differential, okay. but it's still a matter of them winning their next two games and San Francisco losing two. Well, San Francisco, though, Bob, does have it. They're playing at LA next week, which is going to determine the West Division potentially. And even if not, it's a tough game at the extreme. <laughs> Oh, that's a good tackle right there. Looking down by Tinker Keck on uh, the play. Got a flag He's down on Arnold. Right about a 48 yard line. Okay, regular. Now, one other point, Bob, that we haven't brought up, and that is the Orlando What's Rage. The We're watching this one with a big smile today. Okay, and Memphis is the Jacks hang tonight. on. Orlando will clinch yes, on the overall back. top seed uh, in the XFL. And that means. Holding. 25 of the 25 of the receiving team during the return penalties 10 yards from the end of the run first down so you heard the penalty the uh, orlando rage if this okay, score comes up let's go marcus check it out right there you can see the block you can see a little bit of shirt a little bit of shoulder pad one of the guys half undressed it's an ugly sight all along approaching the two minute warning if Orlando can win their first round playoff game, Bob, then the championship big game at the end would be in Orlando. Mm -hmm. A big if, but Orlando Rage watching this game. We'll see what the Axe will do. Deep in their own zone, trying to put some points on the board, we think. Back in a moment. Football fans, coming up in 15 minutes on UPN, there's more XFL action. The San Francisco Demons. Take on the Las Vegas Outlaws at Sam Boyd Stadium on UPN. The loser of the game will be eliminated from playoff contention. The Demons, the Outlaws, coming up 15 minutes, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific on UPN. And for San Francisco now, this game looms even larger because a victory not only puts them in a playoff spot, they will have clinched with a win, but gives them a shot against L.A. next right, week in the NBC game to somehow pull out first place in the West. And that chance remains if Memphis can hang on here and San Francisco can win their game. Of course, the Axe are hoping for a demon loss to keep their playoff hopes alive. And we uh, we talked about the change of quarterback Marcus Crandall and, uh, well, you know, the choice, okay, why not go for more points just in case it comes down to a point differential. You know, Marcus Crandall goes in. You can still go for the points with a new quarterback. But obviously, Bob, no urgency is to well, this team. They're, they're exactly. slowly it's moving to the line. They're running, they're running off move. tackle. I mean, just they're handing the ball off. They're not trying to, they're not trying to buy time. At this point, they don't care. They're just letting the clock bear happy with what it is and have let it run out. But, you know, this is definitely something where they should have run the score up as much as possible. Uh, you know, Al Luganville and the rest of the guys would have understood. You know, they understand the game of points. I mean, you could understand if they were losing or, you know, it was a yeah. one-point game maybe and it was a 50-point difference still. 
they, they made up 15 points five six, five in five three six. quarters, basically. Uh, been, Green and the guy slowly moving to the, the huddle. There's no Hunt. sense of urgency. Randall's going to throw here. He's going to go bombs away here. He has Hobbs oh, out there. And it was just a oh, oh, I don't know. That was a late flag. Uh, the, 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 and the refs and the refs thing, the refs uh, defense, he, was he was digging for the flag. He was hard, having a hard time getting out of his back pocket. Catchable ball? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Ball was catchable. Right. Uh, he was moving right defense behind Defense number 29. Automatic first down. Spot of the foul. Ricky Parker on the back. We couldn't, from our angle, it was kind of tough to see. But he got right about there. Jumped him a little bit early. Come on. They got a 47 yard call. penalty. <laughs> terrible call. Ah, yeah. It's a bad angle. It was uh, from the from the, from the first angle was better. Than that. <laughs> the bad call. Yeah, that, that was, that was something off. Call. That's a horrible call. Oh, what, what have you ever wore, worn uh, black and white stripes? <laughs> I know. I know. Hey, you, you watch the game. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. <laughs> that green eighty. Thank goodness. Green eighty. First and ten, Crandall. Play action. They're going to go for the end zone here. No, oh. a little short of that, but Jordan. But at least they are. Certainly smelling the end zone and going for it. I heard we were saying just a minute ago, they, their first play out, they're going to run, run off tackle back. right. You start yeah, thinking, the okay, they're just going to let the time run out. And obviously, they, you know, maybe maybe Kippy Brown's dis uh, discussion with uh, our Kip Lewis was uh, changing his mind a little bit. Read right, 580 shoot. Pop, pop, pop. Let's go. There you go. Strong right zip. Let's go. Strong right zip. Read right, 580 shoot on one. Ready? Marcus Crandall out yeah, of East yeah. Carolina. Led the Pirates to a couple of bowls, including a Liberty Bowl win here in Mike Memphis for their college days. A buck 39 80. to go. In motion is Crawford. And Crandall is throwing down a flag. Oh, that'll, hurt. Down. that'll be a hold on that one. With the sack, though, they might just decline the penalty. Yeah, well, they're, they're putting them. What's the flag? Clipping, number 74 offense. Penalty is 15 yards. Previous spot, second down. That's an interesting call down inside in the trenches. I don't, I don't. They call it on, they call it on Bernard right. Williams. The left tackle there. Never even touched him. Oh, that's another. That's two for. That's two for two. That's two brutal calls. Didn't he? That was actually one brutal call. The other one before that. Trying to okay. even up, I think. He, he knew it was such a bad call. He's, we better even that up. <laughs> they got him. They got him for intent. <laughs> it was. Yeah, bad thoughts. Take left. left. It was Move intent. Right. Intent to right. right. So now. Back up, back up, back up. Oh, ball's right here, and Twenty yards. Third and seventeen. They're listing it. Let's go. I left slot. Now it would be a 49 yard field goal attempt if they don't get this in terms of any yards. So that would be a test of putting some points on the board in a 15 point game with a minute and a half to go. Green Eddy. A sack would put him out of field goal range. Randall back, play action rolling. Rolling and looking. And the hook. This firing with Kitts. Part of the problem you get with a new quarterback yeah. who doesn't get a lot of uh, reps is the fact that his vision gets a little constricted. He gets a little nervous, doesn't see a whole lot of things. He had Bo Morgan I sitting all by down. himself. The entire, watch him, watch him in the uh, tailback, sitting almost on the XFL logo in the middle. He's going to come out to their left side. Watch, coming out late. He is wide uh. open. If he turns and sees them, and lays it out, they've got another touchdown. Well, they're going to buy go the 49-yard uh, field goal attempt from Jeff Hall, who happens to have a, a pretty good boot. He has a good leg. We had a four between the 40 and 49, although he struggled of late. And they're going to go for it on fourth and 17. Randall fires. That's not going to be enough. Just a little short. Well, it's, it, it's close. It is close. Depends on the mark. It is very close. Yeah, Hang so. on. No, it's going to be, it looks like it's going to be a little short. Yeah. A little short, right? Well, about a half a yard. Yeah. 
don't know. Uh, you know, you always wonder, and you always talk about the receivers who go out. They know they got to have 10 yards, and they go out and they run an eight-yard route or nine-yard route. You need 17 yards. You can't run 17. You got to go 18 because you know you're going to have to come back for the ball a little bit. And that's exactly what happened there. He ran at 17, came oh. back, caught it about 16, and they marked it. I hate to be Mr. Second Guesser here, but, but we're pretty I, kick, I kicked the field goal there for 40. Oh, jeez. Get three more points. You know what? You know, one on one, right? Fourth and 17 is it? No, I'm on it. You know, pretty tough. Scott Milanovic has come on uh, second time this year. Does not take any snaps during the week. And LA is not going to give uh, Memphis a chance to gain and there's any kind of uh, momentum or make off a play or anything. Memphis should call timeout. They should call timeout. They've got three. <laughs> this is a big conspiracy theory with you, isn't it, Craig? No, it's not. <laughs> let's, let's show the fans some appreciation, some love. We're not going to call timeout. I force them. <laughs> tell them. Go ahead, tell them. <laughs> you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't call timeout? 44. Come on, Mr. Golick. Did you call timeout here? Yes or no? Veteran Smash Mouth football player Larry Zonka would call a timeout. He also will head north to Alaska. Join him immediately following the games. For those of you on the west, go behind the scenes at the ground pounding, pounding a drag racers on popular hot rodding television coming up on TNN. Hey, no matter what, we've been having some fun here in the last few minutes with decisions, but it's a great effort for the Maniacs today, winning over the hottest club in the league. Look at this! A lot of it just thrown. It's going to be picked <laughs> off. Anthony Marshall's got it. Marshall is going to just go down. Why did he run for the end zone to take a, fix up that point differential? I think he didn't want to run the clock out. <laughs> All honesty. They're going to get one play at it. Well, as, as everybody, as, as the last two plays, they had all taken a knee. Non-contact foul. Non-player personnel on everybody the field. Everybody on the field. Declined. The game is over. Everybody They're in the field. The everybody on the sidelines thought that the game was taking another day. Watch. As he's about to take a knee, you're seeing people come out on the field. Yeah. Right about the 35-yard line there. A couple of people. Including guy, Lee Rehrman. Lee Rehrman in his red pants almost run over by the wide receiver. Okay. Why were they throwing oh. to begin with? <laughs> what a strange finish here. Lulled into, they tried to lull them into a false sense of security. <laughs> no, when, hey, good luck you guys. Big playing. win for Memphis. They go to four and five. LA falls to six and three. Hey, Coach, Coach, a great win for you guys. you got to be happy the way your team played today. Oh, these guys came out, and, and it, the turnovers in the first half, you can't do that. You know, you, we've done that all year, and it's kind of bitten us, but, you know, they fought back, came out the second half, and, and made it happen, scored on the first possession, and that's what you have to do. So maybe we're on a roll now. I don't know. Coach, got to be a tough loss, a little disappointing, but you're still in the playoffs, and you still control your own destiny at home next week. Well, no question about it. We did not play well today, and uh, part of that is because of Memphis. But you got to bring your A game every week in this business, or somebody's going to get you. And we certainly didn't have our A game in any aspect of the game today. So we'll go back, lick our wounds, and see if we can't beat San Francisco next week. Well, you got, you got San Francisco at home next week, but of course, yep. early in the first half, you lost Arnold McDonald. Got to be a big loss for you. Well, we'll see. We've won with him uh, without him before, and we'll do it again. If you guys can get rid of these turnovers, you guys are going to have a powerful team. Yeah, I think it's been like that all year. Um, it was just something we got to really concentrate on. We got lucky with mine at the end there, but, uh, you know, I, I think we, we showed our potential at times. It's just a matter of, you know, just getting it done. So, Shin Yamada and company win a big one by 15 memphis maniacs is showing some signs of what they hope to show all year mm -hmm. but nevertheless a big win keeping their slim playoff hopes alive despite the point differential no doubt about it this was a, and again i think we see the continued maturation process of jim druckenmiller a guy with so much potential coming out of college taught by a couple of the best nfl quarterbacks steve young and dan marino finally some of it must have sunk in because he has learned how to become a professional quarterback. Once again, our final score, Memphis 27, LA 12. Football fans, more XFL action coming up right now. Over on UPN as the San Francisco Demons take off. The Las Vegas Outlaws at Sam Boyd Stadium in the Sin City. For Bob Gola, 
Kip Lewis, and the red panted Lee Rearman. I'm Craig Benavini saying so long from Memphis. You've been watching the XFL on TNN. This is the XFL! Some home field again. Devin Cobb at the goal line brings it up to the 20 and gets to the 23. He was taken down by uh, Ronnie Carpenter, and Memphis will start it off at the 23. Well, like we said before, they've got some injuries to the running back situation in uh, in Memphis. Rashawn Salon was their starter. He Let's had go, a shoulder baby. injury. Yeah, uh, Brent Moss stepped Such in. He got right nicked. Uh, Sanford was nicked. Right right. Morgan is, is basically one of the only guys that, that is kind of injury free. So we're probably going to see a lot of Jim Druckenmiller. Step it over! Step right over! Step over! Druck handing out Bo Morgan, the versatile back. Nothing doing there. Stopped quickly. And the first good battle good on test of wills on the line was good certainly good going to L.A. But of course, the uh, Four weeks ago, L.A. was taking on Rashawn Salam, one of the best running backs in the league. Now they take on Bo Morgan, a guy with a lot of heart, but certainly not the same skill as Rashawn Salam. Exactly. He's a smaller guy, comes out of the Air Force Academy. Yeah, I played a little pro ball, but, uh, you know, 5'9", 200 pounds, isn't a guy who's going to bust his, bust his butt for some extra yardage. Bo was on the Cowboys practice squad as a quarterback in the NFL. Druckenmiller, hey, he's still a five to go. And Jim Druckenmiller, who's 6'4", 240 pounds, has just scampered for a gain of 42 yards. He was looking downfield to Daryl Hobbs. Wow. But he was uh, held up by, the, by one of the coverage guys. He saw that then the <laughs> Druckenmiller saw the middle of the field wide open. And as you can tell... I, I, I can't tell you. As I say, as you can tell, he's not much of a runner, but he hey. just picked up a ton of yardage and proved, proved that he could do it. I couldn't tell by that run. <laughs> you have a very high standard, I guess, Bob. 42 yard pickup. Drunken Miller, he could tell. We know that. The ball dropped by Charles Jordan, who was really rammed by Del McGee, and Jordan appears to be down after the hard hit. And he might be hurt. Uh, he's one of their receivers, one of the tough receivers they've got. Daryl Hobbs, Charles Jordan. And uh, I, I, it sounds to me like he's kind of got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Get these soda pads off. Uh, Jordan's been the favorite receiver of Druckenmiller over the last few weeks. Why would he want the shoulder pad off? Well, well, uh, well, 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 shoulder, big time, no. shoulder injury there. No, no, I've got a feeling that from the what he sounded like, I've heard that sound many times in the field. Yeah. You get the wind knocked out of you. It's that very short, choppy breath where you just can't. The, the diaphragm starts to spasm and you can't take a deep breath. And there you saw the helmet right into the rib. So definitely got the wind knocked out of him. And you know, the, at that point, you know, when you're fighting for your breath, everything feels like it's constricting, including the jersey and the shoulder pad. McGee was on the coverage, but it was Juan Long who made the hit and injured Charles Jordan. That's nothing new for Long. Knocked out Jeff Brom back in week seven, separated shoulder, the Orlando quarterback. Juan Long, once again, you start the game just sending a powerful message. It was last time, house of pain, I bring the pain. I'm back home, my field, my house. Do you have any roommates? Right, the receiver. What's it like living with his mean mother? guy <laughs> he's gonna me well done i think we got the picture i think we got the picture a lot, of, a lot of injuries this memphis team has really been suffering the injuries uh as you remember we talked about charles jordan daryl hobbs but it was also uh kevin prentice at wide receiver it was a big big factor for them early he goes down we already told you about the three running backs salam cooper and moss so they have, uh, a lot of their primary people have been down and out. They've had to, to really focus everything around Druckenmiller. Well, I think what you called it originally, Bob, is exactly what happened. Is Jordan is getting up now after being able to catch his breath. Yeah. And he looks to be okay after that vicious hit by Juan Long, yeah. who you lives here in Memphis, Tennessee, went to Mississippi State. You learn to recognize the sounds that people make. You know, there's certain sounds they make when the wind's knocked out of them. There's certain, certain sounds they make when they, they're like whiny little punks and they're babies. And there's, you know, Why are you you're, looking at me? I'm not looking at you. You are. You're looking right at me. I was just talking to you. Oh, okay. Blue 80. Blue 80. 
Second and ten. Druck throwing. A little short, but it's caught by Jaheen Arnold. We should pick up. No? They were saying it was off the grass. Oh. Looks like he might have. Uh, if Arnold was a shortstop, that would have been a beautiful play. But the bottom of him. A little bit down the You know, what we're probably going to see, because of Bo Morgan being the running back, the only running back truly healthy, we're probably going to see a lot of the short passes. It's off and right done. Deep base right. L.A. Special X Reed on one. Ready to grab him. I see Tony Charles Jordan coming back in after getting the wind knocked out of him. Jordan has 37 catches. Fourth in the league. league. When you when you look at the, the, uh, the conversion, the two-point conversion, where they have to run it in, most teams only have like two plays, only like two plays that they work on. Here in the XFL, because there is no kicking, you know, the, the Memphis team, for example, they have five different plays that they work in. You know, they try to add in more variations because basically you're talking about defenses in the XFL that actually have to game plan for this specific play. It happens every single week. It's going to happen. You're going to face it. Here's, let's check it again, the touchdown. You see McGee uh, in LA, on the LA side. McGee comes out and crosses right in front of him. McGee gives him a little bit too much room. Bad angle of pursuit. Wide open, Charles Jordan. Good thing with Jordan, too. After that hit he took early, you know, you, you worry about mentally, you know, is he going to be into it? You know, is he going to be worried about taking the hit? We used to call it, the, if a guy was didn't like being hit or if he was afraid of being hit, we used to call it, he could say he could hit it. He could hear a cat sipping milk at 100 yards. You know, they start to hear every little thing and they panic, but you can see McGee, or Jordan right back into the fray. He only heard the crowd roaring with that 22-yard touchdown catch. It's his third team of the year. Ah, in motion. Picked up by Parker. Rock rolling run, run. to the right side. In traffic throws. He was too high. He had Arnold. He had Jaheen Arnold open. He threw it over his head. And the Axe again cannot convert on the extra point. But they too take the early jump here at the Liberty Bowl. Joining the Chicago Enforcers and the New York Hitmen. Archie rotates down it. Made to the jump. At Scott and you shall receive. There's the pump back. And wide open. If Chicago holds, they're still alive. Look up the pass. Oh, they're still alive. A huge road victory for the enforcers. Gentlemen, Birmingham's playoff hopes are still alive. Real simple for them. They got to win tonight. There's a backward pass. Oh, look out. Double pass. Oh. Oh. So Derek Clark's late score giving Orlando the win moments ago. Charles Jordan, after the touchdown catch, cutting off to get something checked out. They were, uh, Craig, they were checking up along his ribs. And then one of the things, too, I noticed checking his sternum, because that uh, one along his helmet caught him right about dead center in the chest. And, and we've seen a couple of guys over the last season's NFL football, a couple of sternum shots with cracked sternum. So it's a difficult injury to come back from. Not the thickest part of the shoulder pad no. either, is it? No, it's just where the laces are, and right. boy, you can take a pop there. Rochelle squeaking down the sideline, somehow found some room. They get out near the 35-yard line. Vermont Lawless made the stop to push him out, and L.A. will start with good field position after the early miscue by Maddox, something he has not done in recent weeks. Well, we told you before the game, 11 touchdowns, only one interception. Uh, really have been Texas making the sales, right choices. As I one, said right? before, though, it was pressure. That, and, a, and a high snap, I think, that really made him hurry that throw before he saw Sawyer coming into position. 48! 48! Set. Maddox firing over the head. Ronald oh, McDonald is incomplete. John Williams was defending. The guy sitting in there. There's a guy sitting right there. Haley, 49. Here we go. Let's go. Pipe twin Haley, 49. I want right. Pipe twin Haley, 49. We're gonna run it. Go. Trout, yeah. Move to the left. Trout, trout. Cover two men. 48. Says handoff. Handoff to Dalvin McCullough. First carry of the game. 
Following his blockers for a gain of five yards. Well, you know, if, if all else fails, one guy that we have uh, failed to mention in the discussion of the quarterback has been McCullough. Saladin McCullough has been a guy that Saladin McCullough has really come onto the scene for these guys. A couple of weeks ago, starting to really pound his way into the uh, line of scrimmage, proving that not only can he, he has the speed to, to find the hole and find an opening, but he also got some, some toughness. Three matches, two touchdowns running in the first five weeks. Since then, McCullough has taken over, and he has four TDs over the last three games. Maddox looking for some room. No receivers open. He's firing in there to McDonald. Oh, great effort by going on McDonald to dive and not only grab it, Bob, but dive ahead for the, I believe, the first down. See where they spot it. Well, I'll tell you what, Rico Clark made a play on that ball, and I thought he might have had it, but McDonald, great concentration, incredible concentration to hold on to that. Personal McDonald. foul. Roughing the passer. 92 defense. Penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. You have to read here with the penalty after the throw. You see him there, 92, right in the middle. He comes out. He's chasing him. We didn't see it, which pretty much means that it was a late hit. You can check it out here. You'll see him come out late from the outside. Yeah. Speaking as a uh, an old no tackle myself, if you have to run that far, we yeah. usually work only in the middle, and as uh, Howie Long used to call it, the phone booth. If you have to run that far, you got to hit something. <laughs> well, yeah, even if it costs you 15? Yeah, well, you know, you yell that later. McCullough gets inside the uh, 35 down to the 34. He's already the sixth leading rusher in the XFL. Empty, Pennsylvania. Here we go. Now we got state. So empty, empty. 50 Pennsylvania on one, right? You heard him say empty, no backs in the backfield, five wide receivers. No! Jim Barker, the offensive coordinator for LA, the voice you're hearing. The quarterback, Tommy Maddox. Maddox over the middle. Wide open as Damon Gibson. Inside of the 25. Gibson, of course, the big spark a couple of weeks back in our mm -hmm. game on TNN against Orlando, mostly on special teams. Good job. Oh, bring him back, they're running back the punt beautifully. That time, though, they put five wide receivers out wide and dump it over the middle. Got to, you know, you spread out your coverage people all over the field. Hopefully, get it a guy like Gibson and give him a little, little, little room Charlie Owen, right? to run. But the coverage was was good and tight, so he had no yards after the catch. Or yak. No. Got to have the yak. Forty-eight. There's some Forty-eight. Of the leaders in the yards after catch in this game, both teams. McCullough has room on the left side. Pass the twenty, taken down by Jackie Kellogg. Two minutes. Gain of six on the play. Good cutback. Kellogg uh, flowing over there to make the play, but if you are defense, you can hear what they're saying. It's too many. It is too many. It's a trip. Rocket Florida special two on one, right? Tommy Maddox. Go. Only one interception in his last 134 attempts. 48. That pick earlier against Sawyer. Fires complete to Copeland who slipped at the 15. That's a bad mark. Right near the first down. Yeah. You Jermaine out of uh, the Tennessee area, went to Tennessee, starred for the Bulls national championship team. Thought he would wind up playing for the Axe, but Memphis wound up it. Let's go, Texas play. Two other players, players on including Marcus one. Nash, and they actually allocated locally not knowing that Marcus would go to the NFL, and they lost their shot at Copeland and wound up in L.A. 48! Oh, well, we're watching an L.A. team, and this is what they do to you, Craig. We've seen them before. They just pound it away, pick up a little of the time, whether it's a run to the pass. Which game by McCullough, one of the things that favors of Copeland is his dance in the end zone, a dance that cornerback Rico Clark does right. not want to see today. Can't stand it. And if they try to do it here, I might have to go in there and break it up. Uh, I can't see him doing that little dance out here on my field like that. Uh, it's not happening. So get ready. Get ready to rumble. There's Rico Clark. Does not want to see the dance from uh, Jermaine Copeland. Maddox and Travis trying to buy time. Intercepted oh. there. This time Tyrone Bell. Poor pass by Maddox. And Tyrone Bell is still going. He picks it up. Rico Clark. Clark might do some dancing after this play. He's still going. Juking and jiving to the 43. And the Axe D comes up big again. Tyrone 
Bell makes the catch. Rico okay, Clark go. makes the run. Once again, it's pressure on Maddox that's forced him to make the bad throw. He just squeaks it off. And I don't know how you can't see Tyrone Bell, 6'3", 210, hanging out in front of the receiver. A nice dish, too, by Bell to Clark. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing an L.A. Extreme team that we have not seen since the beginning of the season. Sloppy, forcing the play, and giving the X a life here with some playoff hopes. Our score here in Memphis is the X-60 Extreme Zip as we pause for a timeout. Let's take this look at New York linebacker Ron Murkerson, a great example of the U.S. Army's victories in life. Uh, in 1998, um, I was diagnosed with anterior compartment syndrome uh, in both of my lower legs. Uh, they had to perform a, a procedure to release the pressure from, from uh, my muscle compartments in my lower legs. This was something that was rare in football players. I didn't have a lot of answers and didn't know if it was going to turn out the way that everyone hoped it would. It makes me it's also second in yardage with 686. Mentally, he's going to have to get over six. that hit. Blue that leaves a memory, believe me. Blue 80. Ricky Parker is man to man on Jordan. Drop looking Jordan's way, and he fires it to Roosevelt Potts for the gain up near the 31 yard line. Looked like he might have had Jordan deep had he wanted to go there. Yeah. Well, actually, Bo Morgan on the catch. I'll tell you what, the, the pressure really affected his vision. He saw Potts short and decided to dump the ball off, but but he did. He had Jordan uh, deep. They ran a nice uh, nice X route. He wanted down the sidelines, had him wide open. But like I said, pressure affects your vision and makes you want to just dump it wherever you can get it off. Look at that! Look at that! Just runs it. Kind of a somewhat of a pick. Oh, the picks are illegal. So that wasn't truly a pick. Yeah, right around the linebacker, Rico Mack, and Al Luger told me yesterday, not very happy with his linebacker play. As Morgan running, again, nothing doing. Long, long again, oh, makes so the I told you. One out of uh, Mississippi State. Oh. Now, you wouldn't think with a tough guy like this, about a hey, poultry science major. Oh. Oh. That's what he got his degree. I don't know, even know what, what is called. Now, somebody's got to kill the chicken. <laughs> not very happy with his... Linebacker play, as Morgan running, again, What's up, baby? Oh, What's up, baby? I told you. He got it in there, all right. Man can fly around and make some hits. No backs in the backfield for Los Angeles. LA taking over, Maddox pass is batted down, and incomplete. A lot of good awareness by these uh, defenses I've noticed in the XFL. Every week, the bat pass is being batted down. You know, they used to yell at us a lot of times. You know, if, you, if you can't get a pass rush, at least get your hands up. So if you batted a, batted a ball down, it usually meant that you weren't pass rushing very well. But these guys are very well, very much aware that even in the middle of a rush, they get that ball up and get the hands, get the hands up and get it in the quarterback's face. Maddox throwing has the man, Donnell McDonald. One of his favorite receivers, John Williams, with pretty good coverage on Darnell. I'll tell you what, could have played him much better than yeah. that. Ball was nice and thrown, but it was uh, the position they had on Williams that uh, allowed him to make the catch. Here we go. Let's go. Eight strips. Eight strips. 59 solid throw it on one, right? Done. What Al Lugaba likes most about Tommy Maddox, told me last night talking, Two. he's giving up some of his individualism, not worried about the stats and putting the big numbers together. Throws it away at the proper time. Been on target when you need to do it. A fiery leader. Target intercepted. Taken by Corey Sawyer. And he brings it down inside the 20. In interception the second in consecutive weeks after a nice streak of 107 passes that Maddox had going until last week. And let's, let's give that to Corey Sawyer, but let's also give that to Marvin Thomas. Defensive end who had a beautiful rush. Coming in from the one side, and, and, and uh, Tommy Maddox definitely saw the rush. You'll see from his left, Marvin Thomas coming in. Maddox feels the pressure, dumps the ball off quicker than he wants to, and does not read Sawyer stepping in front. I snap, might have thrown off a little of the timing too there, but Maddox laid it out, a big chance for the Axe. Rock play action, Morgan. Throwing receiver open over the head of Daryl Hobbs. Ricky Parker was on top of him. He had Hobbs inside. You know, Drunken Miller, Bob, very sharp in the first meeting against the extreme. It was all over in wet conditions. 
but of late he has been off a little bit, throwing short and overthrowing receivers. Well, that, and that's one of the things. He's been throwing it a little bit high. The six foot five, maybe you should squat down a little bit. They forgot he's too tall for that. Went left, maybe. Big, you got to move, move just a little bit. Let me see. NFL experience. San Francisco and the Dolphins. He was the first round pick of the 49ers back in 97. Another play action. Druckenmiller firing. He's got Jordan. Del McGee was supposed to be covering. Regular. 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 Charles regular. Jordan regular. Regular. responding. Yeah. It was in hard. Lost his breath. On the yep. first series, he came back here. This there, is the way to answer. Here you see him. Uh, Del McGee trying to catch him with a man to man all the way from the other side of the field. Gets good position. That is, Jordan gets good position on the McGee. Wide open across the field. I zippers, right by spot. I by zippers, right by spot. That's how you do that. The actually been the worst team in the league on the conversion, just 27%. The league average is 39%. And they're going to call timeout here to get the extra point. So Memphis is on top early. You know, one of the things, Craig, that in the National Football NFL is in the Mid-South today, the final home game of this inaugural season. For Memphis, the fans here are still holding out hope that the Axe can knock off the hottest team in the league and keep their playoff hopes alive. Today for the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee, it's the LA Extreme and the Memphis Maniacs. Well, just two weeks to go, and the West is indeed wild. All the teams still jostling for the playoffs. LA is already clinched. More on that scenario in just a moment but first you know how we started off we'll go down to the field for the mad scramble all right gentlemen the team that recovers the ball will have a choice of kicking receiving or defending a goal do not fall start i will say set then i'll blow my whistle are you ready So Kevin Dunn well, we gets it for Memphis. He's now two and five, and Damon Dunn is now over five on the scramble so far this year for LA. Hi everybody, Craig Benavini, Big Bob Golick. Welcome to the XFL on TNN. Two games to go. The hottest team in the XFL, the LA Extreme, playing today against Memphis. Their last loss came against the Axe way back in week four. Boy, it sure did. And uh, but the, from that time on, this Los Angeles team has been on a roll. Somebody was waiting for somebody to really pick it up and keep going, and that has been the Los Angeles team. They have got something to work for here, as you said before. Yeah. Home field advantage is, is something they can't reach, so we'll watch them play very good ball today. They have an axe to grind indeed today very after nice. losing lastly to Memphis. Let's look at this scenario, Bob. L.A., as you said, already in the playoffs. There are some things still on the table for them. They can clinch the West with a win today or a San Francisco loss tonight at Vegas, the UPN game. And they can clinch home field throughout the playoffs. They need two wins for that. And an Orlando loss next week when the Rage play. As for Memphis, still alive but much cloudier. They have to win their two remaining games. We're not done yet. They need two San Francisco losses. Are we done yet? No. Here's the biggie, Bob. They've got to overcome a 49-point differential with the Las Vegas Outlaws. However, they will play the Outlaws next week. Mm -hmm. If they can get a nice win this week and then, let's say, beat the Vegas team by maybe 20 next, they still got a shot. Although it's a slim hole. A shot. That's 49, uh, 49 th uh, I'm point thing. I'm trying to sell you on it, but you know. Again, I'm not buying that for a minute, but we'll see how they do today. But today is going to be interesting. If they do get the yardage and you do get the point, it's going to be up to Jim Druckenmiller because their running backs, they've got four of them, but guess what? Three are broken. So, well, partially broken. We'll probably we'll, we'll probably see mostly a passing attack today from Druckenmiller. And uh, on the other side, I would imagine Tommy Maddox will match up with him, probably uh, pass well, for pass. Certainly nobody's been hotter in the XFL than Tommy Maddox who leads the XFL in virtually all of the key passing categories. Mm -hmm. and he's been red hot, particularly over the four-game win streak. Absolutely. He has found his receivers in Copeland and McDonald. If they start covering, covering those guys, double covering those guys, he has other receivers. But you see that he's mistake, virtually mistake-free with only one interception. 
and he has been so terrific all year. As you look at Jim Druckenmiller, he came on for uh, Marcus Crandall early in the year. He's got one of the yeah. best arms in the league, no doubt. You know, when he first came into the league, they thought he was kind of immature, but he's really come along. They said he spends a lot of time in meeting rooms now, extra time, watching film, learning to be a quarterback, and I think it's paying off on the field. No one's ever questioned the big arm from Jim Druckenmiller. Uh -huh. For more of the acts, let's go down to Sarah Kipps, Kip Lewis, and Coach Kippy Brown. Well, Coach Kippy Brown, you guys still have an outside shot to get into the playoffs, but you're running into a Los Angeles team that's on a roll. What's your biggest concern today? Well, we've got to take care of our business. We've got to play as well as we can play, not turn the ball over, and then make plays when we have opportunities. You have a depleted running back court coming into this game. Does that put too much pressure on your passing game? Well, no, we just have to do what we do. We're going to run the football and uh, hopefully be successful, but uh, turnovers and mistakes are usually a determinative factor in the ball game. All right, Coach, let's go to the other sidelines where Lee Rareman is standing by with Coach Al Luganville. Coach Luganville, you've clinched a playoff spot. Your team is relatively healthy. Why not just coast into the playoffs and almost mail it in today? That's not the way this league's made, and uh, <laughs> we have too much respect for Kippy and this football team to do that. We'll play hard. Well, and, and does the fact that Memphis spanked you pretty good in, on your home field week four, does that weigh heavily on the minds of your players? Kicked our butt physically. What about that 2,500? I know these guys were talking about it on the sidelines a minute ago. We'll, be, we'll play hard. Al Luganville said one time this year his team has been beaten physically at both sides of the line, and it was against the Axe, and Bob, he made that point quite clear mm -hmm. to his players as if they didn't know it already <laughs> this week. Well, Jose Cortez will kick it off for the I, extreme. I was going to say, a reminder once in a while does wonders, especially in a, in a good situation where you're trying to get